All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, oh, that was weird. <laughs> Sorry about that. Welcome to the Godot Q&A session. This is the fourth one, and these are doing pretty well, pretty popular. I think I'm helping a lot of people, and I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I am going to be paying attention to the chat. What's up, uh, Buster Bobo? <laughs> like the name. Um, and so basically, I'm just gonna answer your questions. You guys take priority. Uh, a lot of times what happens is people tend to not ask questions for a while into it. Uh, so what I'll do is kind of just go through the Godot Q&A. <laughs> My girlfriend's videotaping me. I'll go through the Godot Q&A as well as the uh, Godot Reddit and kind of just look for questions that I think would be good demonstrative uh, or demonstrative examples uh, of stuff that would be teachable, right? A lot of people actually watch these after effects, which is cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I think that's what we'll do. I do have one question from somebody uh, that was actually in the Discord. If you haven't joined my Discord, uh, please go ahead and do that. And if you're interested, uh, you can ask me questions there and I typically respond to those uh, actually just right away in the Discord. And if I think they're really good, I'll even make a, a really good example uh, out of them here and really go through it in depth. So definitely go check that out. I'll go ahead and drop those links right now. The other thing is of course that this stream is for the Go Godot Game Jam. See, I've never had so many notifications on Twitch uh, because we've got this, look at this, 450 people joined. Myself and Bitbrain designed this page. I think it looks freaking sweet. Uh, let me go ahead and just pop this down in the chat here. If you want to join the Game Jam, it is uh, exclusively Godot, uh, all kind of skill levels. There are some prizes, which is cool. Uh, GD Quest has officially hit us up and will now be offering a really dope prize. I don't know if I was supposed to say that, so I, I apologize. <laughs> if I gave that away. But yeah, that's gonna be really awesome. Um, lots of cool stuff. And of course, it's a great way to learn. I 100% uh, agree with people who say that game jams are the way to get into it because you just won't do things until you force yourself to like, okay, I'm gonna make a game in this amount of time. It doesn't have to be the best game, but do it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into actually uh, answering some questions. Um, yo, what's up, Stefan? Um, Russian man. Uh, go ahead and type me what you would like me to call you because I do not um, speak Russian. Aknikos, what's up? Um, during meetings I have to attend, but only to watching the VOD. Thanks, man. Yo, drop a question here though if you want me to answer anything and then you know you can see it later. Um, <laughs> I do. Not typically not on purpose, but um, I mean I do enjoy being the first guy to like break some stuff going down. But uh, you know. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh yeah, the one thing I wanted to say is that quick plug, uh, but mainly just to help anybody. So anybody who's watching who's really new to Godot, uh, I have dropped for free a um, the non-coder's guide to GDScript, which teaches you GDScript as if it is your first language. Uh, and it goes through basically all the fundamentals with examples after episode four. Uh, up to episode four, it's a little boring, but it's really important on the fundamentals you can see deep dive into vectors, and then we start doing player movement right here, and we get into cool stuff. But I, I, I think it's covering a lot of stuff that is really, really handy. So if you're new to GScript uh, or new to programming, I think it's a good thing to check out. Uh, okay, so cool. Uh, again, you guys' questions take priority. Uh, for right now, I'm going to be answering one of the, it wasn't exactly a question in my Discord here. Uh, I think it was actually in Runjun's Discord. It's hilarious because I'm very active in Runjun's Discord. Um, great, really great YouTube channel, great guy. Uh, and I think it was Skeleto was his name. And he was really confused about using the animation player. So I kind of, I'm no expert, but I, I use the animation player quite a bit. Uh, I actually think I've got, well here, let me open the actual project to show you one of the, probably the most ex uh, advanced thing I've done with the animation player. So this is Godot Man. Uh, project files and where the hell is the project? There it is. I know I was looking for Godot.project instead of project.godot. Um, good Godot main character and then open this up here. Okay, so uh, this is probably the most advanced thing I have done with the uh, animation player. Uh, so you can see that this guy is entirely animated by the animation player. Um, he, I don't know why there's a significant lag now, it's probably because I'm streaming and doing all this stuff. But uh, so he runs and you can see that his uh, run cycle, these are all actually just uh, different nodes here. So you can see everything involved, right? These are all just sprites. Every single one of these is a sprite. I'm actually not using joints, although I probably should and that would make my life a lot easier, but I haven't really got into that yet. Um, and of course this also includes aiming and shooting uh, animations here. So I can run around. Um, 
And you can see also that we've got a nice smooth transition from walking to running because that is something that uh, you can do with the animation player. You can see I can also aim right here uh, and he, he looks at it pretty smooth. It's a lerp, which is nice. And then he shoots and there's a recoil action no matter which direction you're pushing or, or pointing, I mean. I don't know if you can see, but he's shooting nodes. That's like the idea is that Godot Man shoots nodes. I think it looks pretty sweet. I, I actually, <laughs> I haven't seen this in a while, but I think it looks pretty sweet. There's obviously some things I need to fix still, such as like that snap on the head. But, uh, you know, it was really just a project to kind of see if I wanted to do something. But anyway, yeah, that's that. Um, if you can pronounce Igor, sounds like Ehor. Oh, Eeyore. Is it Eeyore? Then please, you can call me like that. All right, tell me if Eeyore or Eeyore is correct. Is it Eeyore or Eeyore? Um, also, How are you going to do that? By saying yes. Oh. Okay. My girlfriend wants, really wants to be a part of the stream. Um, she's been begging me, like, please let me be on it and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I've told her no. <laughs> Any user. Um, yeah, so, like, I just want to quickly kind of go over some of the aspects of the animation player here, and then we'll go into actually just making something ourselves. Sorry. Um, so, when you do the animation player, uh, you have to add this, of course. This is just like any other thing. We start animation player. Over there it is. There's also the animation tree. The animation tree player is deprecated, uh, which means it's like it's no longer used, so they're going to kick that out. Probably, I'm actually surprised it's still here. Uh, I'd imagine they just don't want to break people's games um, who are using it. But uh, yeah, the animation tree is what we'll use in conjunction with the animation player typically, but it's not necessary. The animation player is how you actually make your animations, and animation tree is kind of a manager for those or, uh, animations. So here we've got the animation player, and uh, you can click here, it says animation, and here are all, I'll make this, uh oh, stop it, a, 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 my dog is biting my um, cord because she wants my attention, this is Bean Bean, everybody, little frijolita, okay, she's very cute, and she's also a big stinker, like biting, she was, I was like, that's weird, someone's yanking on my mic, and it's Bean Bean, um, She's, she's adorable. Okay, so anyway, here's how you do the redefine you game dev, what's out? good. Um, you want to take her out? Do you want me to? Sure. Beating, come on. Ow. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Okie dokie. So, we've got, uh, yeah, so right here, you can click animation, and you have some, um, basically, options for what you want to do. You can load and save animations, uh, and this will save them outside of the animation player. They're automatically saved within the animation player here. You can see here are all the different animations I have. Um, so right now it's on idle. We can go to run here, um, except when this is running, just turn active off there. And then if I go here now, I can I can play these things. I should be able to play these things. Oh, cannon arm run. Okay, yeah, there we go. There's run. So you can play run, play the idle animation, uh, you know, the shoot animation, and then yeah, stuff like that. Uh, play. Okay, and yeah, so that's how that works. Um, so what you would do if you wanna make a new animation is click this and click new, uh, and this will make one of the animations here. Uh, so we can click new, uh, and then you name it just like that. Uh, then here, this is really complicated, so I actually want to go over to, let's just go to like a function like shoot. So you can see this one's pretty simple. There's only three things involved. We grab each of these nodes and we can affect their properties. So if you don't understand what properties are, I'd recommend you check out my tutorial series on that. How do you load unique shader? So I, I, I will drop this if, uh, you know, let me read this question. Buster Bobo, if I may ask, how do you load unique shaders, for instance, um, for instance, of a scene applying different parameters of shader? Ah, that's, uh, I, I think, to answer your question, I think all we need to do is actually, uh, let's see, do I have a, I think I've got a shader in here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's this one. Um, and then, the time, I think it was Neopodon. Was it this one? No, 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 not that one. It Oh, apply shader. That makes sense. Um, okay. All right, so the way you would do this is like, I think I've got the shader, yeah, I've got the shader applied here. And what you want to do, uh, oh God, where is it? There should be something that says local to scene. I don't know why I don't see that right now. Um, use parent material. I, you want that unchecked in your case. There should be, there we go, under resource. So here, if we go to any of these nodes, you can go down to the uh, underneath canvas item, material, then click resource and make sure you check local to scene. Uh, and what that should do is make sure that this is a unique one. You can of course also like make an instance of it and add it, but that's probably the easiest way. Um, 
With some Android apps, long tapping their icon on the home screen launches a short list of app shortcuts to open the app on a different screen rather than their regular start screen. Uh, Azor, will this feature be supported in Godot games? I will be usually... Uh, latest save file already. Yeah, thanks. Uh, try that out and let me know if that works for you, Buster Bobo. Uh, I think that's what you meant. That's that's what this is made for, the local to scene, is so that you can have multiple, um, you can use the same material and not have to make a bunch of different materials in your game uh, and use them separately depending on the node. Um, so that's why, yeah, that, that's exactly why that exists because people have that problem. Of course, that's also handy to do the opposite. Like I'm making a calendar app right now and I'm gonna put like dark mode and then I just have the same shader applied to everything that inverts the colors. Um, and then, so that way, all you have to do is change that one material, and then the entire program changes color. So it is kind of handy uh, in, in that way. Uh, now, to go to um, so Sassy's question, um, so I'm not a, a contributor to the Godot engine or anything like that. I'm just, uh, I've just been using Godot for a while, and I uh, want to help people learn. So I can't say anything towards that. Uh, I have not looked that up currently. We can go check that out. I haven't tried it. Um, I know that's also something you can do with iPhones. I don't know what that would be called, so I honestly don't even know where to start looking for something like that, to be honest. Um, but I would imagine it's not currently something. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Um, well, I guess we need to search, like, what is that? All right, so Godot. This is literally how I do things, and half the time, the Godot documentation for most things are, is actually very, very well documented. There's even tutorials people list. If, if they find a good tutorial, they link it. So uh, I literally just say Godot and then search what I want. So let's say like uh, Android home screen options. I don't know. Uh, multiple resolution, search for only on Android. Yeah, I mean, so as far as I know, this is not a thing. Um, And it looks like it's going to be a deep dive, but yeah. So unfortunately, I can't. I don't think I can really answer that very well for you. But I would imagine that it's not just on uh, my understanding of Godot. I, I don't think that's something that they would have implemented. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, no. I, I, I would look into um, doing something like that. This is this is freaking cool. Um, yeah, I would definitely look into that. If you can find any kind of resource or any kind of documentation pointing me towards that, uh, I would be happy to kind of go explore that and give you an answer um, in the next QA session, or if you can find it, that during this QA session. But I just don't want to spend uh, too much time like Googling stuff because no one wants to see that uh, live on stream. So sorry about that. Uh, but let me know if you find anything. Okay. In your personal opinion, is it possible to build, for example, Terraria and Go using GDScript? I mean, as I heard, GDScript does not provide that much performance. Um, yeah, so... For 2D games, Godot is absolutely fine performance-wise. I have made um, some pretty complex, crazy stuff. Never dropped my frame rate below 57 FPS. It usually doesn't drop below 60, but 57, uh, and then that, that was usually my fault. It's pretty easy to optimize Godot. Uh, there's really nothing too wrong with GDScript. It, it's a very well-built interpreted language that's built right off C++. Um, so particularly with 2D and probably 3D, you're really not gonna have any problems with performance. Technically, yes, like technically C Sharp is just a better language than any kind of interpreted language like Python or GDScript, but you really shouldn't have any kind of issue. Something like Terraria honestly would be pretty easy. I think Runjin is actually making a Terraria-like uh, series right now. And it, it's really, yeah, I don't think that would be too difficult to do. Um, although, of course, you need to find uh, smart ways to do things occasionally, but uh, yeah, that's typically not uh, going to be an issue, I don't think. This looks cool. If you're not a member of the Godot Reddit, I highly recommend it. It's really cool to see what people are up to, and also people give uh, really great uh, uh, options. Um, anyway, oh, that's nice. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, in my opinion, I think you absolutely could make Terraria, definitely. So, okay, so I think I'm gonna go hop onto the Godot QA page, and then I forgot how to do this, but you're supposed to be able to sort these by, is it right here? New, hot. How do you sort in Reddit? Uh, add to custom feed, add to favorites. Let me sort it. How the hell do you sort? Huh. 
huh, that's weird. I swear I've done that before and I've sorted by the help flare. Uh, oh, right here, I'm so stupid. Okay, so we wanna go for help. Okay, I need to update the help bar when the player takes damage. Uh, that's a little too specific, get current resolution. Oh, he's using Godot 4. Godot 4 is out, by the way. Um, or not out, but the, they have builds of it that you can play around with, which, which is pretty cool. How can you use a tile set PNG in Godot? Help with lasers, so I was trying to replicate G, uh, DG Quest. <laughs> DG Quest. GD Quest uh, video about laser beams get out, but I'm getting this air. The identifier's casting isn't declared in the current scope. I think it'd be cool to build a laser so I could just do that. Um, I'm using C instead of GScript uh, for. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, dude, go ahead and post either link me to your GitHub or post some code. Let me know, and I'd be happy to take a, a dive into it. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Safe and easy way. If it's something simple, you could probably just post it in the chat, honestly. Um, and if it's something a little more complex, probably link me to a GitHub file is probably going to be the best way to do that. Um, okay, can't drag and drop rigid body. Yes, how to use tile set from code. I think I, I think I want to make a laser. Laser's fun, easy, and I think a lot of people um, have some trouble with that. So we can do that. And then I'll check out the Godot QA. So let's just go ahead and do the laser. I'm just kind of like, getting a few rough drafts. I don't know if you guys do this, like if you're like online shopping or going things, I'll open like a bunch of tabs of stuff I want to check out like on Amazon and then I delete them as I go. But uh, yeah. I've missed that they've provided builds for Godot 4. I've compiled it myself a few weeks ago and it was not a pleasant user experience. Um, I actually have a, a video on how to compile. I totally forgot how to do it, but I, I knew at some point and I'm, I, I will use my own tutorial video if I want to do that. I actually don't know if they've already released a build, I think it might be what you're saying. I think I might have just been confused that it is uh, uncompiled version that you can compile for yourself and, and check it out. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't know that the user experience would be terrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Godot 3.3 has given me some issues, though. It's a little frustrating. A lot of bugs I'm finding, which is kind of crazy. It's the first time that's really ever happened. Um, but they, I think they've already put out a 3.3.1. I just haven't downloaded it yet. This supposed to crush a lot of those bugs. Um, but yeah. Have you heard the news about Buildbox engine? Apparently they charge the free tier devs with 70% of their revenue. The compilation was, was fine, but the engine, uh, interesting. Use, okay, dude, that's crazy. Why? I don't understand, man. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I do that you want to charge people, but don't like make it guys, like don't put it as a ruse and like trick people into paying for stuff. Um, okay, so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and make a laser first. That can be fun. And all right, let's go ahead. Um, I'll just start from scratch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new 2D scene. Uh, we're gonna call this testing world. Oh yeah, everything that I do today is going to be up on the GitHub. I should probably post that uh, I am going to yeah, I'm not going to use the GD Quest code because I don't typically like the GD Quest code. Um, I just think that uh, there's usually a simpler way to do things than how GD Quest does things, and it's typically really confusing for me um, to do those things. Okay, let's go ahead, grab that. I'm going to let him know that. Okay, answering or making this live on right now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Just letting them know. Okie doke, so here's our testing world. Uh, this is just literally going to be a place to drag and drop stuff. So I'll go into QA sessions, create QA session four, save that. Let's make a new scene here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a kinematic body, uh, add a collision shape. Uh, I'm also going to add a Sprite. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, and then of course, for the Sprite, we're gonna add the wonderful Godot icon. So beautiful, everybody. Scale, I'll, I'll transform the scale to uh, two by two. Okay, um, and then let's make it red. I think that's sweet. Got the red Godot, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, okay, and then we'll go ahead and add a collision shape. I'm just gonna add a box real quick. I'll do this. Oopsies, why does why this happen for me? Okay. Perfect, okay. Uh, and then what we'll go ahead and do is save this as a, 
basic player. Uh, I'll create folder. We'll say laser. Okay. Uh, and save it. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a script to this. And we're going to do constant. So I'm kind of speeding through the basics right here because I'm going to make a player that moves around. So uh, constant speed. We'll say max speed. Max max underscore speed uh, equals, uh, I don't know, maybe 1500. Let's do just to start with a thousand and we'll do constant um, cell duration equals 100. Okay, uh, why you not like these though? There we go. Okay, uh, then I'm gonna say function physics process delta um, and we're going, oh, we're gonna make a var input underscore vector. Uh, go ahead and ask me any questions you have about any of this stuff here. Uh, and we'll just say uh, vector two, and then say var velocity, which equals, or just uh, vector two, okay. Okay, cool, 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 just like that. Um, say, oh wait, I can't, I can post my code of player, it will help you. Oh yeah, go for it, dude. Um, you can post it in here or you can link me to your GitHub, whatever you prefer. Uh, actually, I don't think links pop up for some reason in the chat. Um, and I don't, I don't know why exactly. Um, let me go do that. Um, let's see, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, and I can't see comments. So let me know if you've posted the code. Um, but yeah, this, this, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple to, to make this. So I'll say input vector, input underscore vector. Uh, dot x equals get or input dot get underscore action strength uh, do, 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 do just ui underscore right yeah minus input dot get underscore action strength ui underscore left okay we'll just do this and then we'll change this to a Y, change this to uh, down, this to up, and then we'll say input uh, vector equals input vector dot normalized, and uh, then we'll say velocity plus equals um, input vector, oopsies input underscore vector uh, times acceleration, and then uh, velocity equals velocity dot clamped max speed. And we just say move and slide velocity like that. Uh, let's go see if that works. All right, cool. Oh, we're not slowing down. Okay, so forgot to do that. We say if um, bum, 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 bum. If input vector uh, does not equal zero, I'm gonna do this, and then we're gonna say else velocity equals velocity dot move towards uh, vector two dot zero uh, acceleration. Okay, there we go. Why? This seems to be, I don't know why I always do that. Vector two dot zero. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So now I've got a player that moves around the screen. Uh, I'll buy it, I'll buy it a little bit fast, um, but that's fine. It's, um, it's actually, let's go ahead and set this to like 800 then. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's a little more appropriate. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a gun here. So I'm gonna add a sprite, okay. Uh, and I'll call this gun. Uh, in fact, actually, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's just duplicate this one. Call this gun. Uh, and then we'll go, I'm gonna go into the visibility here. Uh, and then I'm gonna take this to make it black. And then I'll go to the scale. Transform, scale, we want the scale and the X to probably be the same. Scale and the Y to be uh, 2.4 maybe. Yeah, oh no, let's do a little thicker than that. Point three, nope, why am I stupid? Point five, okay. 
Uh, and then let's do this as a 32. Oh, no, not, not the position, I'm sorry. The offset here, we want this to be like 64 maybe. Nope, 32, 28, 24. Okay, cool, so now that ro uh, orbits around this point like that. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and set that there. Um, let's see, go back to the text here. It doesn't look like anything's showing up. Um, there's got to be a way for you to send me that stuff. I don't know why it's not letting you. Can you, is it a lot that you couldn't post it just right here in the chat? That's really a bummer. I don't know what, like how you would do that, except that you can, so, oh yeah, here, let's go ahead and post this. Um, bum, 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 bum. I'll just make a new thing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you, I'm gonna post my Discord link. Do, 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 do. Uh, and then just go in here and go into the general and then just pop it, pop it in there. Um, bo, bo, bo. Okay, so we go here, invite people, copy. Okay, uh, so just go in there and paste it and then I'll, I'll go ahead and grab that. Oh, I'd like that, invite you, you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy too, I like him. Yeah, any hooser. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we've got our gun. I'm gonna make lasers come out of this gun. Uh, where do I want them to come out of? Well, I want them to, I want there to be a, a barrel position. So I'm gonna add a position 2D here. Uh, and then if you don't know, a position 2D really um, is literally just something you could, I mean, you could use a sprite and not put a texture in it. It'd be the exact same thing as a position 2D. It just gets the position. We can query this and say, get global position here. Uh, and it'll tell us where this is. And that's nice because now if we rotate this, you can see that the, the position 2D stays uh, locked at the same place in the barrel. So we're gonna essentially spawn our laser starting from that point, which is cool. Um, Oh, is the stream laggy? Like my voice is lagging and stuff like that? Here, let me let me check this out. Let's see if this is here, uh, and it'll tell us where this here, uh, and it'll tell us where this here. Um, it seems okay from my end. Let me know if other people are experiencing that, uh, and I'll see what I can do about it. Um, but anyway. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get this done. So this is a gun, we've got that. Now, in order, I actually just covered this in my um, Ghetto tutorial. So we'll make an on ready var. Actually, I like to put my on ready vars right there. On ready variable. Uh, if you don't know, this is just a variable that is only, is created at ready, uh, essentially like creating a variable in the ready function. Uh, and then, so this is going to be, uh, so we'll call this gun equals gun, just like that, very easy. And then I'm gonna say on ready var um, barrel. Is that how you spell barrel? There we go. Uh, barrel underscore pos equals, oh, no, I just call this position 2D. There we go, okay, very cool, very cool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plop this all into a separate function here called movement, movemente. Just like that. Function movement. Cool, cool. Um, and then just to make sure that that's still working. Yep, cool, we can move around. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and just say gun dot look at get underscore global mouse position. Just like that, and now we have a gun that, uh, that aims at our mouse and, and stuff like that. So cool, cool, cool. Uh, so we'll just put, I don't want to make this its own function because it's so simple. So we'll just call this aim. Okay, um, very cool. And then now we're gonna go ahead and make a function called shoot. So function, shoot, I'll even call this shoot laser. Okay, and I'll pass this right now. We're going to put this right now into the um, physics process right here because we want this to happen. Um, now, I had to think because typically I spawn something, but with a laser, I don't think we actually want to spawn the laser material. What we actually want to do is just use a Raycast 2D node. Um, yeah, we want to just use a Raycast 2D node, uh, actually. So I, I think I am going to go ahead and um, change up what I'm doing just a tiny bit because we can make this a little simpler. So what I'm going to do here is add, so I'm going to do uh, Raycast 2D. Okay, uh, and then I'm gonna call this gun 
And then I'm going to put this as, uh, as a child of that. I'm going to delete that position. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and delete this like that. So that just says gun. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to make this, I'm going to click enabled. Then we're going to go ahead and set this to be, um, let's do a thousand. Uh, and then we want the Y to be zero. So that way it's pointing right to the right like that. And you can change this, of course, uh, to whatever you want the range to be. We can also have this cast at some range. We can have it just look um, as far as you want, just like that. Uh, and so the reason I'm going to do that, so this is going to be gun. So gun now is going to be the raycast. So gun underscore uh, raycast. Okay, just like that. Uh, and then gun. And so this will give access to that. Gun. Oh, there we go. So this needs to be gun underscore Raycast, okay. Uh, and now we get the same effect, it looks at it, because uh, the gun sprite is a child, but now we're actually pointing the uh, 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 the Raycast where we want to, to aim the gun at. Um, okay, so Paceman, did you, okay, let's go check to see if uh, he plopped something down here in my Discord. Although I would like to finish this. Um, all right, nothing, oh wait. Bowal, what's going on? Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead and drop that. I don't know if that's you, but go ahead and drop that link in the Discord, and I'll, I'll, I'll jump there uh, in a bit. But I think, so right now I want to go ahead and make the laser. Um, so let's see, what do we want from this? Just to make a basic laser with the line 2D node, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add a line 2D. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to the points. I'm going to add two points here. Okay, uh, and then default color, mm, depends what color you want. I'm just gonna do like a solid white, I think. So I'll just go all the way up here to uh, pure white. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I was like wondering why I had all these this palette here. And it's because I'm making a calendar app in Godot actually. And these are the palette right now. It's actually pretty cool. I'm pretty psyched about it. Um, but anyway, and so we want this, where do we want this to start? Uh, I think I want it to start like right there, right? So we want it right there. Uh, and then we can do visibility, show behind parent. So that way it's behind the gun and it starts like that. Um, and then, yeah, so then we're going to be using just a few things here. There's a way to dress it up, which I don't think I'll get into quite. Just add dot. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying. Yeah, let me finish this up real quick because this is actually not going to take very long. To get it to look beautiful, uh, we'll add quite a few more things to this. But um, in order to just get a basic laser working, it's actually not that complicated. So say on ready var uh, laser equals uh, line. Why is it not accessing the 2D? That's weird. Gun. There we go. Okay, cool. So we've got that. Now we've got the laser. Uh, so here we're going to say, because this is running in the physics process, right? We're going to say if um, input dot uh, is action just pressed UI. Well, no, actually, we want this to be uh, action, action press uh, shoot. Okay. Uh, so this will be only when it, it is, is pressed, I think held, I think. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, action press. Yeah, so action press will start up the laser and then action released will let go of the laser, right? I think so. And then this will, yeah, this will be, because we're in physics process, this will have to be um, continually uh, done. So we'll do this, is action press, shoot. Uh, so if we're pressing that action, then we'll do something. Uh, and then if we'll say else, pass. So essentially, if you're pressing it, shoot. Otherwise, do something else, right? So if is in action pressed this, uh, we're going to check our raycast, right? Uh, and we're going to say, mm, well, I guess we don't need to be colliding with something. We can just say that. Yeah, we'll check that. So we're going to say uh, if uh, gun raycast dot is colliding and then we'll say gun raycast we'll say var target actually I'll do this so we'll say var target okay and then we'll say here we'll say target equals gun raycast dot get underscore collider and so what this does is when you query this function on a raycast 2d node what happens is you get the object that it is colliding with so that's what we're going to do. Um, 
Dude, yeah, absolutely. Very excited. I don't know if this is how GD Quest did it, but this is just how I'm doing it. Uh, and I'm not going to make it look beautiful, but I'm going to make it work, is, is my idea here. So we've got the function shoot laser, we've got a gun, which is a raycast, uh, a gun sprite, uh, and then a line 2D, which I put right there. Uh, and then I don't know if you've, you've seen what I've done so far, but now this aims at it, and now we're just going to actually make it uh, do something. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say var target, okay? And we're going to say if the, the raycast is colliding, then we're going to say target equals uh, gunraycast.getcollider. Uh, and then, oh, I guess actually what we want to do here is just say uh, global um, underscore position. Okay. So now target is actually going to be a, a, a position. So we can actually do this. We can say uh, vector2. This is optional, but essentially this just type hints target to make sure that we have to give it a vector2. Um, so now we're going to give it the whatever object it's colliding with, the global position of that object, right? Oh, is that what we want? I don't think that's what we want because if the target um, is slightly off, the laser won't go perfectly straight. And that's not quite what we want. I think Raycast actually has collision, like you can get the, the collision point. So methods, get collider, get collider shape, get collision mask. Collision normal, get collision point. Returns the shape ID, oh wait, no. Returns the shape ID of the first, oh wait, no, no, that's not what we wanted. Where is it? Returns the collision point in which, yeah, perfect, that's what we want. We wanna say get collision point. Um, so here we say get underscore collision point. There we go. And this should return a vector two, I'm assuming, okay? Uh, and then essentially all we're going to do is we're going to tell our line 2D to then go towards or put the second point uh, towards that. So we'll say uh, do, 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 do. Uh, laser dot points dot uh, negative one. So it's going to get the last point in the array. Uh, and we're going to say uh, equals and we'll just say target. Okay, just like that. Uh, now what we'll say is else. Okay, so this is if uh, the raycast is not colliding with, it, with anything. How far do we want it to go? Well, we want it to just go to the tip of the raycast 2D. So let's check if we've got a, uh, I think we'd go to properties, cast two, cast two, uh, the array's destination point. Perfect, so that's what we want. It returns a vector two, so we're gonna say get cast two. Okay, uh, so we're gonna say basically just this, else, so if it's colliding with something, we'll shoot at that, ob the laser will go towards that object and stop. If it's, if it's not colliding with something, meaning that you're just shooting out in random space, what's going to happen is that the last point is now going to be put at the, um, we're not gonna put target anymore, but instead, yeah, I guess we actually, I'm just gonna get rid of the whole target thing. This might be, I like to write code like this, I know not everyone does, but this is how I'm gonna do it, like that, uh, okay. And then we don't need, oh, what did I do here? Oh, yeah, this is what I want to get rid of. Okay, we can get rid of the target thing here. Uh, and then here we'll just say gun underscore raycast dot, I already forgot what it was called, cast to, uh, dot get cast to, dot get underscore cast underscore two. This should return the, yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. Um, and then let's just go ahead and go to the line 2D. We have a thickness we've got. So let's see what happens now. I think, so I think if I go to project settings, input map, if I go to UI shoot, yeah, so space should be doing it. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure, let's say print shooting. Well, actually, we should be able to, because currently it's not colliding with anything, right? So we should be able to put this right here and then see it print shooting, but it's not. So why is that? If input dot is action pressed, what if we do this? Because this could be a small bug. Is that the, no, so that's not either. That's weird. Now what if I put it here? And this is how you debug using the print function. <laughs> so we're seeing like where it is working. Huh. Oh, is action, should be action pressed. Is action pressed, that's why, okay. There we go. All 
Okay, so now so now the laser extends what we want it to unextend, right? Um, and then we also want it to like kind of blow up. That's also pretty easy. The thing I was trying to get uh, is a laser that is permanently connecting. Okay, okay, let's see. Um, see you, Stefan. Thanks for checking in. Sorry that's happening to you. Beanie, hey. Okay, I gotta bring my poogie poog up because she's eating my mic. Okay, the thing I was trying to get is a laser that is permanently connecting the player character uh, and the mouse cursor using ray casting. Ah, so that it gets interrupted when something is between the two. Okay, that's actually pretty easy to do. Um, probably easier than doing this, to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out. Uh, and then for right now, I'll just say pass. Okay, so we want a laser that extends to the mouse position. Uh, is getting a laser that's permanently connecting the player character to the mouse cursor using ray casting so that it can get interrupted when something is in between the two. Okay, so uh, all we would do, well, I guess you probably, you still want it on shoot only, right? So what we would do here is actually not delete this. Um, uh, well, what we want to do is in aim, rather than just say uh, gun ray cast that look at, um, we would say gun raycast dot set, or I think it's cast to um, equals uh, get underscore global get global mouse position. Okay, um, and then I think this will still aim. No, it's not going to aim. So let's do this then. So we want to keep this, uh, and, and then we also want to say uh, gun raycast dot cast to, well, we should probably do that set underscore cast underscore two, uh, and then we'll say get underscore global mouse position. Uh, I'm just gonna make another function real quick called aim, because it's starting to get too big. So we're gonna call this function aim Okay, uh, and then we'll say var target equals get underscore global mouse position, and then we'll stick both of these guys. Let's do aim in here, uh, and then we'll stick both of these guys right there, except now we can put just target in here. Uh, so that way, why? That way, why does it do that? Okay. Target. Okay, cool. Um, target. Oh my god. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, now, if I do this, okay, now it looks at it. Um, ah, but that's a problem, isn't it? Oh, that's weird. I think that might just be because it's in here, though. So let's do. Um, a, do, 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 do. What do they call this guy? Player. Colors player, basic player, basic player. Did I make several basic players? The oh, laser basic player. Okay, cool. Now I think it should work. Nope, it's still not working. That's weird. Interesting. Okay. So, I see what you want to do. Yo, Diego! Do you remember everyone who comes through your stream? Last night I was working on a parallax background and found my fix because you answered a question on the forums. Hey, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty uh, active on there, which is actually why I started this. I'm like, I'm just gonna start answering those questions live. And I'm like, that'd be a cool format. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very excited. Uh, that's awesome. I love knowing that I'm able to help people. Um, okay, so the problem is really this. This is the problem that's causing the issue, right? Because if we do this, oh, or not, Oh no, should be. That is super weird. Huh. So set cast to should set the point, the raised destination point relative to the ray cast position. Ah, okay, so this is, that's the problem. I don't know if this was exactly the problem you're having, but just like the line 2D, you have to use local coordinates. So we have to actually do 
Uh, Godot has a function called to underscore local. Okay, uh, and what that does is that it converts a global position to a local position. So I don't know why Godot does this with so many things, um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's see if that works here. Okay, so now this isn't working, but uh, the other one should be, hopefully. Okay, so the it now is actually shooting in the correct direction, although slightly off for some reason. Oopsies. Oh, that's also probably hampering the performance. Okay, so yeah, so now the raycast will point towards uh, the correct position. I don't know why it's like ever so slightly off, but yeah, you can see that that's why that's happened. We're so, yeah. And then here we actually need to say, so what I'll do is to actually do this and I'll say target and then I'll say to underscore local uh, target like this. Okay, and then I think that should work. Oh. Okay, so now it looks at it. Um, I don't understand why that's happening now. Um, I don't know. I could probably solve this, but... I mean, this this should basically do it, right? And then and we'll say else, uh, and then we'll say laser uh, dot points uh, do, 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 negative one equals uh, vector two dot zero. And what this should do is only, only while you're holding it, does it shoot. And then when you let go, it stops. So this is kind of odd that, I, it, I guess it's rotating on top of the cast two. So what if we get rid of this and do this? Is this, we still have the same problem? Okay, no, that's much better. So that's weird. So I, I, I actually do know how to fix that. So I think I'm gonna do that right now, which is just that we're going to say, um, we're gonna have the actual gun sprite look at that. So we'll say um, on ready var gun underscore sprite equals gun. Let me know if I'm not answering your question at all, dude. Because <laughs> I would, I think I'm doing it, but yeah. And then, and then I did not forget about you. Your, uh, I will be getting to your uh, thing very next. I think this is going to be it, though, um, because now all we want to do is make the actual gun, the gun, look at um, that point. So what we'll do is we'll say uh, gun underscore sprite dot uh, look at, uh, and then we'll say target. And I think that should do it. Nope, why is that still like that? Because the other problem is like, this is, that can't be causing that problem though, right? That's really weird. But I mean, this will work. Um, I think the only problem is the aiming, which wasn't really part of your question. But to answer your question, this is how like, if you hit an object, and we'll actually go ahead and do that just to show you. So I'll go ahead and add a um, static body 2D. We'll add a sprite uh, and we'll add a collision shape right here. Go ahead and do this, okay. And then I'll put this over here and we'll add of course our um, beautiful icon.png and uh, we'll make the scale two by two. Uh, and then I'll make the collision shape a square, a little square. Runjan, what's going on, dude? Haven't seen you in quite a while, mate. Don't know why I spoke like that. I apologize. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, oh, that's super weird. It's like snapping. It does not like that. Whoa. Some very weird behavior. So if input is action pressed shoot, um, gun raycast, if gun raycast is colliding, uh, points equals gun raycast dot collision point. Okay, interesting. So that should work though. Is this like some of the problems you were getting? Uh, I don't know if you're still responding. 
<laughs> I'm British, not Aussie. I'm looking for somewhere new to live. I'm crazy busy focusing on that. Yeah, you mentioned that. That's got to be tough. Keep it alive and updated without having to click. Yeah, dude, you definitely don't have to click. That's just how I did it. All you would have to do is go into... So this is going to require some work. This is definitely very imperfect. There's a lot of stuff wrong with this right now, and I, I'm, I'm sorry that... Uh, I just don't know if I want to spend all the time trying to fix that because it's, it's just dealing with these things that's usually just a matter of getting the right things in either local or global coordinates, right? Um, but all you would do is just not do this, right? Just get rid of that. Let's just comment it out, right? Um, wait, why? Why isn't it like that? Or else. Ah, I see. This needs to be else. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then all we'd actually have to do is do this. So we we comment this out, and then I'll do this. Okay, and then we'll do this. So now it's like that. I don't quite know. This is probably just having to do with, um, so say two underscore local. I don't think this is the problem, but let's see. Okay, so that's not the problem. Because this is clearly the issue. Like, this is working fine. If I'm sorry, this is working fine. If we're not colliding, do that. Um, but this... Oh, so this needs to be 2 underscore local. Maybe? Yeah, there you go. Okay, there we go. So if you go like this, you can see... Oh, thanks. Thank fuck. <laughs> All right, there you go, there, there's the answer. Uh, you can see it moves around, it follows my mouse. Obviously the gun is not aiming, but it's coming from the gun. Uh, and then if we go between an object and that, you can see that it stops right there. Thing, I'm so happy I was able to answer it and not leave you, because that, that should have been easy. Uh, and there you go. Um, and then yeah, of course there's a lot of stuff we can do aesthetically to make that a little cooler, but um, that, that does that, so there, there you go. Very excited I answered that. <laughs> okay, all right, now we're going to yours question. Um, your question, your, uh, here I fixed, okay, blah, 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 blah. He pasted the code, but I'm actually going to, uh, I want to go to his, okay. He fixed, I don't know if that means you fixed this. He's got a code for me here. Doesn't look like he posted in my discord. It's fine. I get it. You hate me. Oh, this should be slash, and this should be dot com. Nope. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. What do you got here? So, extends kinematic bond to D. I concur. Uh, walk force, walk max speed, stop force, jump speed, uh, and velocity, uh, which equals a vector 2. On ready var gravity, uh, project is a get setting, physics body 2D dot gravity. Okay, interesting. Um, function physics process delta. Var, so you're using a kinematic bond 2D, that's what you're doing here. Var walk, so you're defining a variable walk. So I actually, what's the question? Are you still here, Yor? Um, uh, when you can try to do a USA accent, they either do yeehaw <laughs> over the top, hey, like totally. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's where I'm from, that's California. I actually think I do um, a pretty decent uh, British accent, but it's, um, I don't know, it, it's definitely a work in progress. Um, I think I could potentially pass, but um, I don't know. What do you think, Ranjan? Um, okay, question on bottom. Oh, oh, beautiful. I'm sorry about that. Problem is that I want it to reset both jump and walk speed after a player stops, but game thinks that player stops after you change direction. Um, okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and actually, I'm just gonna stick this in my game. We'll do this. Um, okay. And then I'll go ahead and delete this right here. And then I'll make a new kinematic. Kinematic body 2D. Okay. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and add a sprite. We'll just add the icon PNG there, of course. Form um, two by two. Okay, I'll go ahead and save this. 
up, and then we'll go create folder, uh, and this will be for, um, we'll just say your, okay? Cool, 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 uh, and so we'll call this um, your <laughs> your problem. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, uh, and then we'll go ahead and add a script, just like that. And there we go. So now we've got this. No errors at the moment. Let's go see. Okay. Well, are you making a platformer? Is that what this is? Um, ah, so let's just do, this should be, for me, it's just going to be UI underscore right. And it's going to be UI underscore left. Um, walk force times, so, okay, cool. You put this all into one. Um, so you're not going to have acceleration. You just want to move that um, fast. Here's your, basically your velocity. Um, if absolute value of walk force is less than 0 0.2, I don't think it ever will be. Let's do that. Interesting, you're capturing, I've never seen someone do this, but I've always wondered why they have this. So you're capturing the velocity in here. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, and then I guess we need to add that to our scene here. Oh, and then uh, of course a collision shape. So we'll add a Collision shape, uh, and then I'll go ahead and add this as a square. Makes it nice and simple. We'll do that. Beautiful. Save. Um, and then here, I'll just make the static body too big a little, to be a little bigger. Ranjan, what do you think of that accent? <laughs> it still sounds like Aussie to me. <laughs> the cocky accents, heavy London ones, sometimes are so close to it. <laughs> uh, everything works fine, but it resets after player changes direction. Okay. Well, I just want to see what's going on here. Okay. I'm going to do scale uh, x times 10. So now we've got a little thing like that. Uh, let's go ahead and add um, your problem. Okay. Put this right here. Let's run it. Okay. Oh, I didn't check the input for jumping which is, you probably have a different input than me. Yep, so we'll say uh, UI underscore up. Oh, D oh, what the heck? Ah, that's why, okay, cool. I think for just my sanity, I'm gonna increase the gravity and also the walk force. So I'll change the walk force to 1000. Um, but walk max speed, interesting. I don't think I understand exactly what you're doing here with all this. I think it's a little over complicated to be honest, but that's not your question. Um, interesting. Let's see what 500 do. What the? Why is it? Oh, okay. Do this. If you do prints, it automatically puts a space in between, which is nice. 205, 205. Okay, so I'm still confused. Everything works fine, but it resets after player changes direction. What resets? I want... I want it to reset both jump and walk speed after player stops, but game thinks that player stops after you change direction. Um, okay, so if walk equals zero. So if walk equals equals zero, and walk right here equals this, and of course, so that means, if walk equals zero means that our input vector uh, is equal to zero. See, I think that's a little, that's why we make things like input vectors so you can check like, oh, the input is equal to zero. Otherwise, this is a little more confusing. Um, but yeah, so if uh, if our input vector is equal to zero, essentially, then you want to reset the jump speed and, and the walk speed back to this. 
But you're saying that the problem is that it also does this. But I think that the player stops after you. Yeah, so the reason that's happening, um, I would imagine, is that this transiently equals zero, so it's resetting. So I think you could probably fix this just by doing var uh, input underscore vector equals this, right? Um, do that. And then we don't need these parentheses. Uh, and we just say um, input underscore vector. Why is it? There we go. Right? Oh, no, that's not right. UI left. Was it young? Spaces used before tabs on all. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. And then here, what we'll just say is that um, if input vector um, uh, equals equals vector two dot zero, right? Um, so that's essentially what you're asking, right? Uh, as if we're saying not to do anything. Yeah, if walk equals zero, it resets, but there's two ways that your walk force, uh, that walk could equal zero, right? So we've got, um, you're only modifying walk right here, it looks like to me. Yep. Um, and I don't quite understand this stuff, but that's okay. Um, so this is when it's resetting, I'd imagine. Now you, ooh, what's happening? Invalid operands float. Oh, I see. So this actually can just be zero. There we go. Okay, input vector. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. So this needs to be um, vector two. And then we put this here. Wait, how is that even working actually? I'm actually very confused how you even got that to work. Because you just had that, right? So you didn't have, a, this isn't providing a direction. This is just a float, right? And so you're trying to make the amount in that. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Times walk force. I see what you're doing. Mm hmm. I honestly, if I were you, I would just totally change the way you're doing this. I don't think that this is, like this is this is messy. I don't think this is the best way to do this. Um, if I were you, here, you know what I'll do is just kind of, I'll toss you over to, um, I want to increase speed when jump is pressed. Okay, so what I would do uh, is actually just check out, uh, if we go to my GitHub here, Cause I, I, yeah, it, so this is a game that I don't like that I made, <laughs> but the, uh, it's actually pretty decent. So we go to scenes, Perry, uh, do, 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 Perry GD. Uh, you can see here's a guy with some pretty good movement code. So movement functions, uh, and here is what we would do for movement. So we'd say basically this, um, and then I think I think jump is in there. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm going to comment out this here. Uh, and then do this. And we'll say movement. Okay. Um, and then I'm probably gonna need to change a few things to fix this. So we'll say var on underscore ground pool, um, and then we need to say var input underscore vector, uh, vector two, okay, um, if movement paused, if not movement paused, so I'm going to get rid of this because you don't need this, and then we can do that, okay, oh wait, but now that's going to mess with a lot of stuff. I'm gonna move all this back, like that, okay? 
velocity. Acceleration isn't declared. So, um, I think that's what your acceleration is. So we can just say walk force. Walk underscore force, place all. Okay, what else, what else do we need to fix? Max velocity, so this should be walk max speed. Place all. Okay, what else we got? What's wrong? Facing left, that's not important for you. Uh, yes, we can just get rid of this. This is for animation purposes. Actually, I mean, we actually could probably keep that. No, no, no. Let's do that. Okay. All right. And then I don't think, yeah, there's no deceleration. So here we'll just put, uh, again, walk underscore force. Um, and then I don't think you've got, so gravity. So we'll say, this will just be gravity constant. Okay. Oh, you also should not mix constants and variables like this. It, it's not going to cause your game to be messed up or anything like that. But, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, okay. So we don't have a jump force. You must, yeah, jump speed is what you want. So we'll say, change this to uh, jump, jump underscore speed, place all. And uh, so max fall speed. Oh, you don't have anything like that. Okay, I'm just put jump speed. All right. Um, one, line 18 is problematic. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of problems with that code not to be a dick. It's just kind of difficult. Okay, so we don't need this because that's animation. Uh, we also don't need this or this. UI jump. Oh, this is wall jumping. You don't need that. But feel free to take that code if you'd like. Um, if on ground, uh, attack mist equals false, can wall jump equals true, don't need that. Okay. Okay, jump sound dot pitch scale. So that's some some music or sound sound effects, I mean. Okay, and then this might actually work. Let's see here. Uh oh. Uh, yes, yeah, that's why. UI underscore up. Okay. Yeah, so clearly uh, what we want to do is change our. Oh, walk max speed should be like 2000. Whoo! Okay. Change this to 1000. Uh, and then we'll make this 100. Okay, and then obviously you probably need to decrease the gravity pretty significantly to like uh, do 100. Okay, cool. So that's that's how I would make the movement. Um, so rather than this is your code, um, and uh, this is my movement function now. So sorry for just like kind of ripping yours apart and making this, but I do think this, if you mess around with this code, it, it should give you a, a little better of a, um, a little better of an effect. I mean, you can see that like just how smooth that is there. Yeah, I mean, that's nice. You've got a nice acceleration, that's not bad. Um, so right now I've made it so that if you, the second you let go, it's doing that. I, what other behavior did you want? Also, I wanted to, okay, 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 let's do this. Everything works fine, but it resets after player changes direction, so that won't happen in this script, uh, as you can see. Um, 
I mean, I don't really know actually what's resetting for you. Um, okay, do, 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 it works very different. If wonky was there, it resets. Uh, I want it to increase speed when jump is pressed. Okay, uh, increase your forward jumping speed. Is that what you want? Because we can do that. Oh yeah, we can do that. Um, so, uh, do, 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 on ground, if on ground. So this is essentially, if it, so this is when we jump. Jump, okay. A velocity dot y minus equals jump speed, uh, and then we'll say um, velocity dot x. Now it's going to automatically clamp. Uh, so yeah, the way you would want to do this is actually we'll change this. So the good, this is a vo variable, so that's actually good, um, and we'll say velocity. Whoa velocity dot x um, plus equals walk max speed. But the problem is then we'll need to know what direction you're facing because otherwise this will not work. But because if you, if you do this in the wrong direction, you can see it's actually pushing me back. See if I go this way though, it shoots me a little faster forward. That's actually kind of nice. I actually like that. Um, but then, so you'll need to do um, ba -bum -bum -bum. So I'll just do times input vector and that should work. Oh, why is that not? Ah, dot x. Yeah, and there you go. So now that gives you a forward propellant uh, there, um, which is cool. Uh, and then, so yeah, so it gives you a, a boost of a thousand in whichever direction you are moving, and then you jump. So we go this, jump, it shoots me that way, just like that. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm going way too much into this. Um, Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I also wanted to stop when it hits the wall, and I don't know how to do this. So that should be automatic. You want the velocity to equal zero when it hits the wall, uh, or you want it to just like stop when it hits a wall. So I'll go ahead and just uh, duplicate this right here. Uh, and then if we go, let's go ahead and for both of these guys do this, just make my life a little easier. Um, and we'll call this one wall. Okay, and then I'm going to just rotate it like, well, that was actually probably the worst way to rotate something. I've never used that tool. I don't know why I did that. I usually just go right here to the rotate property, set this to 90, uh, and then we'll go ahead and put this here. Uh, and by default, you're you're going to stop when you hit the wall, just because we're using collision shapes and you're a kinematic body 2D and these are static bodies 2Ds. Um, if you're interested in going over the how the collision shapes and layers of masks, that's something I'd be happy to go over. Just go ahead and let me know. But yeah, by default, Godot is going to handle that collision for you. Um, if you want him to stop moving both up and down and stuff, um, then that's a little more difficult, but let me know. Um, every time you jump and hit the ground while jump is still pressed, you can increase jump and walk speed. Um, I don't think so. I am using Restream. Um, I honestly have not even checked Twitch. <laughs> let's give it a let's give it a look see. Do I have anybody? Oh, someone's watching. What's up, Twitch? I'm sorry if I'm not if anyone in Twitch is is uh, putting stuff down because I'm just so used to never having anybody watch my Twitch that uh, I'm not even paying attention to it. So I apologize about that. Um, oh yeah. Anyway, so. My GitHub is in my, uh, if you go to my channel and go to my description, you can look at all my GitHubs, including this entire project for Perry the Dreamcatcher, which uh, is not a very fun game, <laughs> to be honest, but uh, the code is very, very solid. Everything works very, very well. Uh, there's a few issues with 3.3, um, but not in this script, not in this script whatsoever, just like some of the particles and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I mean, uh, is this place a Godot internet checkpoint? This is amazing. <laughs> Thank you, man. I hope you're talking about me. Um, but yes, so like, so this will right now, um, uh-oh, I accidentally just reloaded my, my stream analyzer. But yeah, you can't jump twice in a row. You have to hit the ground before you can jump again. Uh, you also, it's also, uh-oh, 
<laughs> it's also not going to just let you... Yeah, I don't know what else you would want. Well, hell jam. Also, the recent John Remaster MCS. It's my intro. How you doing? Um, okay. So I think I also want the stop on the wall. I don't know how to do this. So if you want the velocity to stop when you hit the wall, right? Uh, all you would have to do is say check in here in movement. We would say um, var on underscore. Well, I mean, actually, we don't even have to do that. We'll say if uh, is underscore on wall. Okay, then we'll just say velocity equals um, vector two dot zero, right? Uh, and then what that'll do is like, if you hit the wall, then we stop, right? So you freeze there. Um, although you probably just want it to equal that for just a second. Um, so we can, we, there's ways to do that, but that, that's essentially the basic of uh, basics of how you would do that. Um, and again, see, I'm doing move and slide and I'm just providing this. I'm not capturing the input of move and slide. Um, I actually don't know, I know you can do that. I just don't know why. I think the reason you want to do that is actually to um, get data about the collisions uh, and, and incorporate that into your velocity, but uh, I'm not particularly interested in that. I, I don't think it really affects your game. Um, every time you jump and hit the ground while jump is still pressed, you increase jump and walk speed. That doesn't happen with the code I just posted, so that's great. Because I used tile map to do walls and floor, that shouldn't matter. Um, it should be able to tell, given that if you pass in this, right? Uh, I mean, actually, this is, I don't know why I did that. Vector two dot down, right? That's what that was then all of this should... Why is my jump not working now? What did I do? What did I do? Okay. Okay. Oh, because this needs to be vector2 dot um, up. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so jump speed. Okay, cool. I mean, that works. Um, and I think that does everything you want it to do. Let's see, lots of people are posting here. Um, do, do, do. Does the input need to be a vector? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, I typically, in this case, actually, it probably doesn't need to be a vector, but um, it is, I'm just used to doing it that way, and I think it's helpful to, to do it that way, just in case you ever want to use the Y value. There's no uh, hurt or harm in doing that, but in this case, no, it's technically not. But then you can also capture your jump vector. For instance, you can go, um, you can put your vector, your input vector dot Y, uh, and then you don't even need this. Oopsies. You don't even need... What is happening with my mouse right now? <sighs> Got some pug hairs in there. So if um, you could just say, uh, instead of if action is pressed this, right, you could say if input vector is positive in the y direction, or I'm sorry, negative in the y direction, then do this. Um, and if it's else, L if it's negative, then fall down faster, L if, uh, or else, right, meaning that it's zero, uh, then just fall normally. So, I mean, that's, that's one way you could use it that way. I'm just thinking. Um, and vectors are not so yeah so that is true but uh, i prefer vectors uh, i was trying to do bunny hop uh, i think you get a lot more than that instead you're getting a full character controller uh, are you using restream also securus is here uh haman kambos uh restream for life yeah R runjan put me on restream and I, I gotta thank him for that because it's it's pretty nice um although i don't think i'm getting much off off twitch <laughs> Uh, as you guys saw my stats there, but uh, you know, maybe one day. I use different names everywhere, but I'm the host of the Retro Jam and Bullet Hell Jam. Oh, awesome! I've been think I've always I've been thinking about joining the Bullet Hell Jam for a while because my favorite game I've made is a Bullet Hell shooter. So yeah, or something like it. Also, the recent John Ray Mass Jam. So yes, that's my intro. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to meet you. Um, I you know, that's really cool. I, I didn't know you used Godot. That's very cool. I, I love that people, uh, bigger dudes, are using Godot here. Um, you can, 
You can use a restream chat, so this way if someone posts in Twitch, yeah, I've just had so many problems with the restream chat. Let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna open up the restream right here and try to go to the chat. Um, it's like not been posting stuff, which is pretty odd in the, in the chat there. How do I do it even? Do -do 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 chat app. Oh, open in browser. Okay, yeah, see like right now, I mean it's weird because, Restream, YouTube, huh. Let's quit this. All right, somebody post something. <laughs> okay, cool, you posted, let's see. Yeah, so it's not, oh, it did come up. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, okay, yeah, so it's not actually even the delay. What was probably is like the first time I set it up for some reason, it just was not working. And after I disconnected and reconnected my accounts, it started working. So yeah, sorry for the technical um, crap that no one cares about. You want to keep the result of movement to slow down in case you hit an obstacle rather than keeping your velocity. Uh, otherwise, you drop off ledges like in free fall, no acceleration. Oh, I see. That's so funny because I'm sure that I've dealt with that and I've hard coded the solution to that. Um, but I, that's, you know, just lean into Godot. Thank you very my new American friend. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, actually, let me go ahead. Um, let me link the GitHub to this one. So let's go here, go GitHub, um, do, 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 QA sessions. And then I will copy and paste this, plop it into the chat. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to GitHub desktop. There should be lots of changes here. Um, and then we can just, oh God. Your problem now. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's offensive. Um, yeah, but let's do that. Okay, there we go. Oh my God. <sighs> Dude, pug hair is all up in with this little like retina thing of the mouse and it just, it's, uh, there we go. Okay, um, so yeah, so now that's that's all up here. If I reload this page, you can see it right there. Um, and then you can go check that out. Uh, and there's where I put that code for that character. So that should all be nice. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's that. Securas. Yeah, so yeah, Securas, you are right. This does not need to be a vector. This could easily not be, but I like to use it as a vector just because I, I think there's a lot of different ways that you could, uh, in fact, make it uh, interesting using the, like you could grab, obviously right now we're only saying the input vector dot X and only using the input vector dot X. Um, but if in the future I wanted to make it uh, input vector dot Y uh, and then get that, and then I could do something with that data, uh, then that would be helpful, right? But again, yes, it's totally not necessary. You could just make this input vector in this case. Uh, in fact, I, I mean, I guess we, we might as well right here. And then, uh, doo -doo -doo. so the problem, oh yeah, that's that's part of the problem there actually. But um, anyway, it, it'd be too difficult to fix all my code at this point. Uh, but then your velocity, you would only be able to track velocity uh, as it is in the uh, X and Y plane. So anyway, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of good reasons for making this a vector. I think it's much easier. Uh, and there's no downside to it. There's only positives. So, Buster Bro, how do you implement knockback effect on kinematic body? I always override this effect by movement inputs. Um, just hosted you on my Twitch channel, but really get Twitch viewers after. Oh, thanks, dude. I don't know why you're so nice to me, dude. I, I really appreciate it. I, I, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, okay, Buster Bobo, implement knockback. Actually, some guy I'm friends with actually just did a video on Runjan's Discord. So I'll go, I'll, I wanna go ahead and like, uh, just kind of plug his video, because he just did that. I don't know, maybe I'll never find it. I think it's, I think it was Destus Games. I'm pretty sure it was Destus Games. I'm never gonna be able to find this guy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely hop in the Discord, because I'll, I'll take a crack at it. I would just love to, because he went through the trouble of making this tutorial to specifically go over that. Um, 
Post that in videos. This is where you should have posted it. Show off your work. Hmm. I don't know. Any hooser. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and take a crack at it. Let's do knockback here. And uh, I guess we could... So, um... Spectre, what's going on, dude? Yeah, that's what I've... Uh, when I first checked out... I, I never downloaded Unity. I checked out the tutorial. Um, and I just noticed it, it just seemed very convoluted, very difficult. Obviously, I, I also don't code in C Sharp. So there's like a lot of barriers. Um, and I think the only reason people, anyone would argue that it's easier is because there is a... It's changing, but there's a little more uh, resources out there for Unity. But I think Godot just by nature is so much easier to start doing your own thing. I love the layout. Like for me, just coming from using Photoshop for a long time and a lot of different art applications like that, uh, a lot of this stuff makes a lot of sense, right? Like the fact that this is a tree uh, and then we put things underneath it and then these are then like kind of attached to that. And so if I go ahead and move this node, it moves all that stuff. Sometimes a little confusing, but also makes like to me a lot of sense, right? Um, but anyway, um, See, it won't let me... I don't understand. I, 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 maybe that's something I can change in my settings. Let me see. Because it won't let people post links, and I want people to be able to post links. Tells live chat. Enable live chat. Allow live chat to replay. Um, no options for blocking. That's so weird. I wish I could let people post... Yeah, I put com... Okay, on comments, I put allow all comments, but it's not. it doesn't give me any kind of restrictions for... Uh, live chatting. So I'm sorry about that. I don't know why. Especially considering you're linking within YouTube, you'd think it would let you post that, but I don't know why. What's his name? Is it Destas Games? Just post his name and I'll look up his channel real quick. Um, I'm not working on the Godot team. I'm not that smart. Um, but uh, I would love to... to part I'm trying to contribute in any ways. I actually, I just added something to the asset lib and I think it was on the front page for a little bit. And it doesn't look like it is any longer. Inventory editor. This looks like it's just... Uh... Oh, there it is. So that's, you know, pretty close. There's This is my Particles 2D+. Plus. Uh, it's a Particles node with a Particles finished signal, uh, which I always wanted, and I've heard other people say they want it, so I made it. Uh, it's pretty simple to implement into your games, and it's right here. It's free. Just go to the asset lib, click it, and then it will download for you. Um, I've got the video right here. I should have added like some kind of picture here. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. It explains right here. I've got uh, a short uh, one minute, 30 seconds of video explaining how you would use it and incorporate it in your games. Um, but anyway. Okay, so it is, wait, but that's, that's not how you spell his name, Runjen. I don't think so at least, right? I think there's an underscore in there. I really, I need to watch this. I'm trying to learn shaders. I know how to do some very basics, but shaders are hard for me too. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Shaders are hard for most people. Oh, there we, you're right, you're right. Yeah, here we go, here's the knockback tutorial. Um, so yeah, does this games, and then his very first tutorial, give it a like, obviously. Um, Yo, what's up? At the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to use a knockback effect. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just take my own crack at it. So I'm gonna assume you're working with an action platformer like this. Uh, we'll go ahead and just take this guy and we'll give him the ability to shoot, I guess. So we'll say function shoot pass. Okay. Um, mm, I mean, all you would really do, so if we go to kinematic body 2d I want to go ahead and see if there's any built-in functions to do this before I hard code it um, so get floor normal get floor velocity slide collision slide count ceiling floor wall move and collide move and slide uh, test move whoa what's that checks for collisions without moving the body okay oh that's cool dude that's awesome I really <laughs> I have hard coded this function before so essentially what this does is like it checks for collisions uh, in, so if you set a, uh, if you set its position, this test position, like 100 pixels in front of you, it'll test if anywhere along that path you've collided with a wall, uh, which is really helpful because a lot of times I want to move something with, with a tween, right? But the problem with moving something via a tween uh, is that you're going to then move, well, I guess you could move the uh, velocity, you could tween the velocity, but I typically move like actually movement. So I hard coded 
to a check where I check every pixel 100 in front of me. And if there's nothing on 100 in front of me, I tween my position to that point. But otherwise, you'd go through walls and stuff. Um, anyway, so this is this is to prevent that, which is freaking cool. Okay, moving slide. Okay, yeah, it does not look like uh, it's got anything built in for knockback, which is cool. If we're a rigid body, I would just do apply impulse backwards. So that's one option. But I really think all it's going to be is just applying. Um, so here you can see right here, all it is if uh, input dot is action pressed UI up. Um, then I think, all, so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, let's call this in here, say shoot, okay. And then I'll say print, we'll say if um, input dot is underscore action just pressed, um, shoot, then we'll print, print shoot, okay. Now, um, so then of course, if I go here and I hit the space bar, you see it prints shoot below. But what we want to do uh, is have it knock us back in the opposite direction of our shoot. So uh, for instance, like if in shoot, I was saying like, you know, essentially spawn um, bullet in, uh, in far dir, right? What I would do uh, is I would say essentially that we want to add a force. So we'd say uh, velocity uh, dot x plus equals, or we could just say velocity, right? If we want to make it go, if you're aiming in any which way, say velocity um, plus equals. Uh, and then we'll say, so if it, uh, we want to do the direction times the amount, right? Um, and so what direction is going to be, what direction we shot the bullet. In this case, I'm gonna assume that I'm shooting the bullet to the right, uh, vector two dot right, okay. And then we wanna say, um, and we say rotated. That's actually, yeah, so we'd say vector two dot right, and then you could say dot rotated. Um, we could say like, for instance, if you spawned a bullet going in some direction, uh, we could say bullet uh, dot rotation. Right. In fact, I think I will actually, I think I've got a bullet scene. So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. So say on ready var uh, bullet uh, underscore T S C N equals preload. Cause I, I, I made a bullet scene in one of the older uh, QA sessions. Player bullet. Okay. Oh my God, my mouse is broken. Okay, there we go. I don't know why it's a brand new freaking mouse. I wanna open up this script here and just see. Um, yeah, so we just have to give it the rotation. <clears throat> okay, so what we'll do here is we'll say, um, var bullet underscore ins equals bullet scene dot um, instance. Okay, then we'll say um, bullet instance dot global position uh, equal self dot global position, although this is a little suboptimal. And then we'll say um, bullet underscore uh, instance, or I will say this will say uh, get score uh, parent dot add child uh, and technically you should put the add child in a call deferred but I'm not gonna do that well instance uh, and then we'll say um, bullet instance bullet underscore instance dot look at get underscore global mouse position okay so this way it will shoot in whatever direction that we are uh, pointing and now we want to go ahead um, and say rotated um, bullet instance uh, okay rotated bullet instance dot dot rotation so let's go ahead and make sure the bullet is shooting the way I would expect first so yeah so the bullet shoots okay and then we want to do this time some amount, so I'll do like a thousand, 
See what that looks like? Um, oh. Uh, plus... So we want it rotated, we want it flipped, where right? we want to rotate in the opposite direction. And you don't multiply times negative one, uh, you do... I wish there's a way to just flip the value, but I think you just multiply times um, pi. Oh no, sorry. Plus pi. Yeah, so now you can see I've got a knockback effect. Uh, and if I shoot straight up, or if I shoot even just a little bit, because of move and slide, uh, it, it incorporates that amount of, of, of stuff. So then you can also do something like this, so I can jump. And shooting actually prevents me from falling down because it's applying some knockback. I can go, if I go like this and jump this way, you can see that um, it's going to go ahead. Oh, see, I knock myself off the edge. And that's how I would implement knockback. A uh, little something like that. You can see, I actually, this is all the code for just spawning the bullet. Oopsies. Uh, this is all the code for just spawning the bullet. This is the entire knockback code. That's it. It's one line. Uh, so we're setting our velocity and we're adding, right? So this is only called once when you hit this, when you press the shoot button, right? Um, and that's up to you to make this uh, even so you can't, you know, spam it like that. Um, but we've got velocity. Um, so we're increasing our velocity by our direction times an amount, right? Uh, otherwise known as a, in, phys in physics, we'd call that a vector um, because it holds both direction and magnitude. Um, whereas, I don't know, I don't know what you'd call it here uh, because vectors mean more than that in this. But so we've got plus equals a direction, which is vector to that right rotated to be this, right? So this is basically giving us a direction and we're applying that times a thousand, right? And we're rotating vector dot right because uh, by default, Godot starts at vector two dot right as the zero. And if you rotate it, then it knows that you're doing this. Whereas if you put like vector two dot up and you rotated it, its rotation would point you not where you want, or you're expecting to go. Uh, so that's why you want to do that. And there you go, that's, that's an entire line or just, I mean, a single line for knockback, which is cool. Dude, I need to I need to download 3.3.1. I, I there's so many weird issues. You know what is here? If I don't know if you're still here, Runjan. Um, getting hit environment. You could make the knockback its own function and shoot in just the supply the vector. Yep, very true nostalgic leaf. That's actually probably what you should do. Uh, it's better to separate code like that as much as possible. But so I want to show you a quick bug here. Um, so if we go to the kinematic body, right, and I go ahead and I add a camera. 2D, okay, like this, okay, and then I want the camera 2D to be a little smaller, so we'll put the zoom at 2 by, oh, I guess 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay, and then we select current, and then I'll do smoothing on, right, and then I run this. You can see that now I have a camera that follows my player. And typically, if you want to add, for instance, a HUD, what you would do is you just add a canvas uh, canvas layer like that. Uh, and then to this, we would add, for instance, like a label. And then I'll say like top left. Uh, and then I'll say um, score, right? Actually, we can even do this in the center. So we'll do center top. Oh yeah, okay, 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 okay. Um, and then center, center, uh, and then we'll do rect scale three by three. So you can actually see it there. Uh, and then, so now if we do this, interestingly, score actually does follow the camera. But if you go in canvas layer, you're, it's not supposed to until you click uh, enable follow viewport. Uh, and so now, whoa, that's not what I want to do. Now you can see that it no longer follows the viewport. Now, if we, lots of ways you can test this out, right? So if this isn't in here, it should now still follow the viewport, but it does not, right? Uh, now, if we go ahead and, and grab this canvas layer, for instance, this is how I usually do it because I usually have my HUD as it's unseen and then paste it in here and then paste it in here. 
then it should follow it, but it doesn't. It doesn't, I don't know why it doesn't. Let's go ahead and move it down here, grab the canvas layer. Oh, it's not gonna let me do that, but that's okay. So we'll put the score right here. What? It just made a copy of it? Okay, so now you can see it, and you can see it's just, I mean, it's just clearly not, it's just clearly not, um, you know, following the, you know, the thing, which it should be, right? That's the whole point of the follow viewport property. But anyway, uh, small digression. So that's a bug with 3.3 that I found that didn't used to happen in my older versions. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Buster Bobo, of course, of course. Uh, okay. Sakuras, thank you. Thank you for hanging out. It was cool. Um, okay. Let's see. Was working on my model. What model? Is she cute? <laughs> I think I'm funny. Um, well, yeah, what model are you working on? You making a game? Okay, so. Looks like there are no more questions in the chat. Please drop one if you've got one. Uh, I wanna, oh, my dog is right in the middle of my legs. Just give my hip flexors a little work. Oh, what's the debugger yelling at us at? What are we doing? Collision is inside tree. Interesting. Very interesting. Huh. Ah, so that's being called every time I shoot. I think I need to quickly solve that. <laughs> um, ah, because you have to, okay. I think all we have to do is put this right here. Yeah, there we go. It was just calling that function before it entered the tree, which you're not supposed to do. That was why that was happening. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Okie doke. Okie doke. So, I was working making shaders, of you, and thanks to another GoGo -Go Jam live stream uh, about your first shader. I, I'm gonna make this a, a, a recurring thing. I really enjoy doing it, and uh, I think everyone else does. These streams are probably my most popular. So yeah, I, I'm planning to do this at least once a week, uh, and I think I'm gonna schedule them. I mean, honestly, I might do every Tuesday or Thursday, or even every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but yeah, so I'll have another one coming up. I don't know exactly what the schedule is, but I think it's going to be, um, I got one next week, but uh, I forgot what day it is. Yeah, but sorry, so I've got another one next week. I wanna do at least one a week. I think it's really fun. I also really love, um, I think explaining your guys' problems. I, I think I'm able to do it in a way that makes a lot of sense to people. Uh, and also I think it, it teaches a lot of people things at once when I do it, so yeah. Um, I think these QAs are brilliant. I've learned new stuff and I've used, yeah, dude, he, you've used Godot for longer than I have. And like, you know a lot of more, a lot more um, tips and tricks. And so I think it's just, I learn stuff. I learn stuff answering your questions. So, I mean, some guy asked about the um, slow time thing the other day, didn't know how to do that. Quick Google, figured it out pretty easily, but it's just awesome that you can mess with stuff like that. Um, also something I learned, I'll show you guys really quick. This is probably not, the most interesting thing to everybody, but I'm making a calendar app. Uh, let's go ahead and do this in Godot. Just for myself, I might release it, but um, it's, it's well, it's an organizer, right? It's going to do more than just be a calendar, but for right now, it's just a calendar. And so I got the control nodes. Um, so here you can see it's got the days. We can scroll down through the times, uh, and then if you resize, it resizes. Uh, all the calendar things correctly with a minimum window size. I've also set the processor to be very uh, low usage, which is cool. You can do that in Godot. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna find ways around everything I want to do. But I think it's nice. It's nice. It was very easy to set this up. Actually, no, that's not true. It took me a whole day <laughs> um, because Godot. The Godot control nodes are kind of weird, but uh, I figured it out. So nothing besides the font, all of this was made in Godot. So all these lines and stuff were drawn basically by the GPU using these nodes right here, uh, which is cool. And they're separated automatically. So anyway, if anyone's interested in how to do something like that, let me know. I'd love to go into it. I, I think it's really cool. This is my current project, um, one of them, but yeah. All right, forget that you know how to code like in other languages, Runjin. Like this is it for me. I know like Python and GDScript, and I barely know Python. Um, so 
Um, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think from what I've heard, if you use those functions, for instance, like if we go in here, and I'll just, just to show you, you can grab the, the OS class and say uh, low, low processor usage mode, and you can set this to true. Uh, and then you can, this is helpful on Android is what they actually said. Is there a space there? Ew. Ew. Spaces. Get out of my code, dude. And then, so you can do, um, this is set by default to something. I don't really know, but essentially it's only going to use your processor when you need it to be used. And it, it greatly decreases the amount uh, required, which is really, really nice. So yeah, I think I think with those things, uh, well, as long with, there's other things you can do in the documentation and recompile the engine, which I will do which makes it much more performant uh, in, in those apps. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to because I just love the, the interface of Godot. Dude, I don't know what F is. I didn't even know F was a thing. I just knew it was C. Like, why are all these letters languages? How is it, Stefan? How's it going? And Buster Bobo, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that you appreciate me. <laughs> um, okay. So again, I'm gonna quickly flex that this is in part to promote the Go Godot Jam, which I am a part of with tons of other YouTubers, um, fantastic peoples. It looks like more and more people are joining here. Five more people. We're at 455, you guys. Let's go ahead and make that 460 by the end of this stream, okay? Uh, but yeah, so this is gonna cool uh, Godot Focus Jam. Um, Bitbrain and I made this page together. It's pretty, pretty sweet, I think. If you want this wallpaper, by the way, just let me know. I'm happy to put that up. I made a few different iterations. These are the nodes, of course, of Godot. Um, I think it looks cool, a little, little kiddish, but uh, pretty cute. And um, yeah, you should join. It's gonna be good for all levels. If you've never made a finished game before, if you've never entered a game jam, uh, no pressure. I didn't finish my first game jam, and I still think it was extraordinarily useful. So yeah. go ahead and check it out. I think it'll be a fun one. Of course, I'll be there playing. I'll be playing a lot of the games live and also um, explaining some things, giving my tips and tricks. I think I'm much a better coder than game designer, I will say though. Okay, so this was that. Let's go ahead and hop over to the Godot QA here uh, and start trying to answer some questions as long, unless anyone has any. Um, Okay. Yeah, it's it's popping up pretty quick. I'm pr pretty amazed. I actually don't think though it's featured on itch because we forgot to put like one small thing in the description, not dashboard. I just want to go there. Okay, jams. And then yeah, I don't it's still not featured, which is crazy, dude. Such a bummer, but it's also impressive to me that it's gotten up to almost 500 without being featured. But I do think if it was featured, we would be, you know, right up here. Oh, the indie tales jam. Okay, so if you don't know this guy, uh, and I, I stopped doing pixel art because now I do vector art and I really enjoy it. He is an awesome pixel art teacher and also just a really cool guy and, and fun YouTuber. And this is, I think, this is the first game jam, so that's really dope. Um, I'm not going to participate, but uh, yeah, it's really cool. Actually, let me show you a little something I made the other day. I'm very proud of it. So I have a Redbubble store. I'm not gonna link you to this stuff because I don't want to like self-promote in that way. But look, I got a little pot. I got a little pot. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. So I made this, so um, this is just a font that I filled in and, and changed barely. But this, I made this from scratch. Like he's a little cute little pot guy. He's got like the shading and the lighting and stuff. Pretty proud of it. Pretty proud of my little pot that I made. I've got a little pot. Funny, I think. Culture, I love how easy it is Godot for me to learn. <laughs> Do they have a, uh, a programming program at your school or a uh, game dev like kind of hobby? Because I feel like, like my little sister who's currently in, she's in high school now, but they had Python classes in um, school, in uh, elementary school or uh, primary school as some people would say. And, Freaking dope, man. That's awesome. That is really cool. And then I know a lot of teachers actually have teaching game dev things, and I think they're probably a little over the depth at this point, but um, you know, it's awesome. I think that's awesome that they have that uh, availability. They didn't have that for me. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Uh, you don't really see people getting six upvotes. I'm interested to just see what this is. No, it's my laptop, no, I work it. 
Oh, that's cool. A little physical education. Try to export to Android. Ugh, I don't even want to know. There's there's stuff. 3.3 is just... Mm. Eh. How to make reusable nodes with hierarchy. I create some nodes with children, for uh, some for the main player, some for enemies. How do I use them between scenes? How do I instantiate these dynamically, like enemies and such? Um, Loadscene1.instance. Ah. Yeah, this is not... Yeah, okay, I'm, I need to answer this. So, the way you would do things uh, is to... Let's go ahead and... Um, I'll, ju I'll just answer it right in here. Or no, I guess I should probably do it in code. So we'd say that... Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, this should not be an on ready var. <laughs> this should just be a var. I'll say this is the recommended way to instantiate nodes. So this is the in recommended way to instantiate nodes. Use a preload, um, a preload of something, and a preload just means that you're loading these scenes. So you're giving it a path. It's going to that path, getting the scene, and then loading it uh, to be something we can actually use in Godot, um, um, like that. Okay. Yep. Um, oh. Ah, that's why that happened, huh? Okay. Any hooser. Um, yeah, this should probably just say res dot, and I'll just change this to say your path, okay? And then I should be able to do in a function. Do that. All right. And oh, why is it not working? I've fucked something up. There we go. Okay. Here we go. This is the recommended blah, blah, blah. Cool. I'll just go ahead and add that answer. Because this is not good. <laughs> However, this guy said this. That's not how you want to do it. I like that better. Okay, um, get node using only C sharp. How to get use get on vector components. Could be interesting. Local government promised to give us money like two years ago, but still no money. I'm sorry about that, dude. I, I think that sucks. Even in the US, like uh, it's really kind of messed up how underfunded some schools are in the country that are public. Like public schools are not funded all the same. Um, and I just don't understand. I really don't how education is not more valued. I think it's probably the biggest problem. People, a lot of people tell you that in the US, healthcare is the biggest issue. And I think it, it's definitely up there and potentially could be the biggest issue. But I would say that, uh, you know, underfunding the education system in the US um, is probably the biggest problem, definitely. And like, you, it doesn't need to be. We don't really need in-person teachers anymore. Um, you know, we just need kind of guides. Like the teachers are, it's going to be hard. That's the hardest part of education is hiring good teachers. But now we have freaking Khan Academy. This guy, this guy, like, like if the U.S. government just funded Khan Academy to, like, provide courses for elementary school, or you know what I mean? Bada bing, bada boom, baby. Like there you go. Like you don't need to hire teachers anymore. And this guy would do it for fucking pennies on the dollar. I don't understand. Like, if you go to the inner city school, which I have been to to volunteer at, uh, I used to do a lot of volunteering in LA. Like, some of the teachers, you know, they hate their job and they just suck. They just do. And like, it's, it, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's my take. Here, healthcare is totally free, but no money for schools. I, you know, you win, you lose. Uh, now, healthcare being free thing, you know, I'm Canadian, or my, my parents are, my dad's Canadian. And it's a double-edged sword just like everything, but I think it should be free. That's my opinion. Uh, th sorry to get political. Let's kind of, let's cut that, even though I somehow gained viewers on my political rant. Um, let's go ahead and hop into some more Godot Q&A. How do you use get on vector components? Oh, that's weird. This is actually how you're supposed to do it. 
From the doc, I hit blah, 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 but using get simply returns null. Edit from the comment instead, get position. <coughs> from the comment instead, do get. So this works. This will work, but you should be able to do this. At least for times you don't necessarily know what kind of node you're working with. Hmm. That is odd. This is also this is all super weird. But yeah, this this is actually something that I not too long ago was googling myself um, because I wanted to tween only the x value of something. Uh, and then yo Ennis, what's going on, man? Seven wages are too low. Everyone yes, that I agree with that too. Yes, healthcare needs work, but our schools are going to put us in a new dark age. Yeah, dude, that that's exactly the problem. Is like if we have a very undereducated country, we're going to continue having riots on the Capitol building and. Uh, you know, people that believe that the Democrats are eating babies. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't have to like them, but they're not eating children. You know what I mean? Just, so, um, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I think, I think education, it's, it's a, you're giving people a tool, whereas healthcare is something that's necessary because you're, you need to help people, but um, education is helping people help themselves, and it's kind of a more exponential, but also long-term investment, right? Whereas healthcare is like, you can see that within just a few years, um, the like awesome things that that would do for a country. But uh, anyway, if you had people that are better educated, you would know, uh, you know, maybe they'd be in the hospital less. <laughs> just a just theory. Um, okay, so yeah. That's this is how you would, that's how you would grab something like that. Um, work with nested state machines and animation tree. I was going over the animation tree a little bit, so maybe I can hop back into that. Um, yeah, Spectre, they are not. <laughs> I forgot what that was in response to. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, okay, is there a way to change the camera 2D frame color on the editor? <laughs> That's a good question. When you do the camera 2D, you can barely, even, even this, like even if we look at our window, like every time I make a video, I record some of these things and I, I put it in um, 2K, so 1440p, and you these things, these little lines like don't show up, they're kind of hard to see. Um, but uh, also, I think blue is a uh, colorblind, unfriendly color maybe? Or is friendly actually. Uh, okay, how to draw several lines between points dynamically. You know, actually what I kind of want to do is that uh, I, I saw a while ago, and I think I'll do it just to kind of explain how to do the line 2D node, and we'll add it, uh, I guess we can add it to this guy, so I'll go into this scene here. Is that how to do like cool line trails behind um, somebody? And so I'm getting this idea, if you don't know who John Watson is, um, and I'm not thinking about the uh, sidekick to Sherlock Holmes. I always forget how to spell John. John Watson Goodell. Because um, I don't know if you guys know that, but John Watson is the sidekick to Sherlock Holmes, and you will not find the correct John Watson if you don't add Goodell. Uh, so he, it's very, it's very uh, inconvenient. He's making this game called Gravity Ace. Goodell, the engine, actually featured it. Oh, I haven't checked this one out yet. Oh, that's actually kind of old. He just he updated all of his. Um, all of his thumbnails, and they look sweet. Um, and so he goes over a lot of, he's, he's, a, fanta he's a programmer for a living, uh, or I am not, I'm a soon to be medical student, current bum. And uh, yeah, I mean like he just, the way he solves problems taught me a lot about how I code, even though it's a little less like, it's actually surprisingly friendly, but it's a little less like tailored. It's more of like watch him and learn, uh, rather than, you know, but he'll, he's really nice, so if you reach out, Hit him up on stream or uh, on Steam. Uh, he will be happy to answer a lot of questions. He's really cool. <coughs> anyway, so I, what I want to do is add uh, essentially a trail to this guy. So I'll go ahead and add a line to D node. Okay, uh, and I'll go ahead and say I'll call this trail line. Um, and then I guess I'll, I'll just leave it as this color. That's fine. The width. That's fine. And then I'll add a new width curve here. Uh, and then so essentially we'll add a point here, go something like that, add a new point here, uh, and then we'll bring this down there. Uh, now if we add two points here just to see what that looks like, 
And then I put this one at 100. So like... Oh, that's weird. It should... Do I have to add another one? Huh. Huh. That is weird. Why is the width curve not affecting it? The width curve should affect it. Uh, yeah, they, they, I think they changed the way the line to D. Oh, no, 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 it is working. Okay, yeah, so you can see there it's getting thinner, and it should be even if we delete this. Yeah, so you can see it, it looks terrible. Let's go to, there should be anti-aliasing. Fill, gradient texture, capping, border, anti-alias, there we go. Okay, and that'll smooth it out. Sharp limit two, round precision eight, that's all fine. Um, capping, that's all good. We'll leave that as it is. Anyway, I just want that, and then uh, we don't even have to get it all the way, but just do something like that, and then you have a, a trail that goes like that. And then I'll quickly add, uh, we'll go ahead and, well, I'll, I'll leave this up, and then eventually we're going to delete all the points. Fill, so add a gradient fill. Okay, uh, and we'll go ahead and start off. I mean, like, yeah, let's let's just do, let's, let's actually sample the color of Godot here. So we can do this. Yeah, let's do that color. Okay, uh, so we'll start there, and then I'll go ahead and do this to save that color, and we'll do this, add that color as well, add another one, and then here we'll go ahead and bring the alpha down. Let's go something like that. Uh, and now you can see that the trail kind of tapers off. So, and then I guess I'll change this to like 50. Yeah, that's more like the trail I'm thinking. Okay, so now uh, I'll also go visibility, show behind parent, uh, and then I'll go ahead and delete these. So it's just cool. I'm just going to make this trail work. Okay. Uh, so we'll say another on ready variable here. So say on ready var trail uh, equals trail line 2D, just like that. Um, and then I'll make a function. So I've never done this before. I've just thought about doing it. So we'll see how this happens. So function. Um, draw underscore trail pass and then I'm gonna go I'm gonna put this in physics process draw trail okay uh, let's see instable whoa wait what Wait, hold on. I'm confused. Does anyone else see a just loading signal on so saucies? Did you just add that to mess with me? To mess with me? What is up? Oh, everyone's been talking and I haven't been seeing this. Alright, let's see. Most teachers in Ukraine uh, making kids study hard by saying to them that if they study good, they can go to U.S. to get education. I would say that... No, even... So if you go to college in the U.S., the uh, science programs are still pretty good. But... Uh, also the business programs depending on where you go right but if you're going to college and like you're going to be like an art major or sociology major or something you're wasting money and time in my opinion i mean unless you really love that but even still most kids don't even know what the heck they want to do uh and they're going to college and paying a hundred thousand dollars so yeah anyway I, I i don't want to talk about political stuff anymore um yeah see no new video figure out must be busy but yeah man good to see you here Mrs. did that cool line thing for Game Jam, like an electric net. Super dope. Oh yeah, I think you could probably do something pretty similar to that uh, using this. Um, the Line Trail 2D is pretty efficient. It's like a vector thing, so you put the points and then it vector draws them to you. But the problem is like, to, in order to get a nice curvy line, it would probably be, you'd have to add a lot of points there. Um, so there's that. I, maybe you could add like curvature to the line. I don't know how. But uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is, so say on Ravar Trail, uh, and then the reason I'm putting it there is because I want to keep all the, uh, so we'll say trail vars, okay, um, bu -bu 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 input, yeah, so these will be uh, movement vars, trail vars. Uh, this will be knockback bars. 
OK, cool. Uh, then so we want to make a few things. So I'll make a constant. And I'll, I'll keep the little bit like this constant. Uh, and this will be um, max points. OK, uh, and this will be just a, a, a integer number. Um, I mean, I guess we could type into here uh, of mm, 10, maybe. No, no, no. Let's do let's do like 20 points, right? OK, um, I think that might be all we need, but we'll come back to that. OK, so now in the draw trail, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to say line. What is it? Oh, I just called it trail, right? Yeah, trail. Um, dot points, okay, dot uh, append. Oh, actually, I don't know how, oh, there's a, um, so if you go to, let's actually go to the line 2D. They've got, so yeah, we've got add points and then remove point, perfect. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, so the end, it automatically adds or deletes things from the end of the line. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. So trail.points.append. So we actually don't want to do that. We want to say um, trail.add underscore point. Um, get, or, and then we'll say two underscore local uh, global position. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking because we're going to have to move with that. So the, the, the line 2D uses local points. So that's why we're doing it that way. Um, people buzzing. Oh, very nice. I've never used the emojis. Okay. User is not very good anymore. Uh, it's not. I, I would say, so I went to the University of Wisconsin and our, a lot of the science programs were pretty great. Um, pretty, pretty great. Uh, even like the dance programs were good, but it's like, I don't know. I just think. People, it used to be, if you just went to college, that really meant something. But now, like, if you go to college and you're a dance major, all that means is, like, you took some dance classes and you got fucked up four or five days of the week. Like, you were drinking. Like, not everyone does that, but the large majority of people who aren't in, like, hardcore science majors, computer science majors, doing anything, or even some, some of the business majors, are just getting hammered. Like, that's what college is. It's just a party. Um, and, like, <laughs> so funny, my friend, <laughs> when we left, we left to go to uh, California, and we asked my friend if he could, um, or our friend, if he could water our plants. And we come back a week later, and all our plants are just so dead. Like, so, so dead. They've been dead for a while. They're totally, like, dried out and, like, like decaying and stuff like that. Um, and then he came over, like, that day. We came back to, like, um, get something that we brought back for him from California. La Mota. And... Um, and he, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, thanks for watering the plants, like just messing with him. He goes, dude, I gave it the good old college try. And like, I just thought it was so funny because the college try is like this old mannerism that meant like you tried really hard. But all I think about was like, oh, so you just like got hammered Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and like skipped class half the time. Like, I'm like, that's like the amount of effort you put into watering my plants for sure because they all did. But <laughs> yeah. You're gonna move to the U.S., dude. Dude, I don't know if you should choose Wisconsin, but the, I mean, Wisconsin's cool, man. Don't get me wrong, but like, they—it's like the coldest winters in the country. But you know, my, the, my last year there, it dropped to negative 40 degrees one day, and they had to postpone school because if you were outside for longer than like five or ten minutes or something, you were like very—you're uh, at very high risk of getting like serious frostbite. Yeah, and you know, at that same time. People were wearing shorts outside because it's Wisconsin. Um, okay, anyway, so then we want to say here we'll say if if uh, trail dot points dot size is that a function? I think it is. 
with... Oh, get point count. Okay, same thing. Turn amount of points. Yeah, so we'll just do that. So, if trip dot points, so we can just say dot get underscore point count is greater than uh, max points, then trail dot remove point uh, negative one. Hmm. Well, if we do add point, so at position. We want it to add it to the front of the line, and we want to remove things. Oh, this ends it. This adds it at the end. At position zero, I guess. Right? No. We want this to be negative one, and we want this to be zero. Okay. And then let's see. I didn't think so. Okay. So the problem. Say print hi. Make sure I'm running this. Okay, what are these? The local variable on ground is shadowing an already defined variable at line 12. Yeah, we don't need this. Okay. Uh, never using the function physics process. Why is negative one out of bounds? That should always grab the last thing on the list. Remove point. Max points. Try that. Okay, so that should end, um, that should remove from the end of the list. Um, now, the problem that I'm seeing is that uh, essentially this is, 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 because it's moving with the player, um, it's, it's spawning all those same points and it's moving with the player. So there's a few things you could do. One would be to simply, um, Ah, you know what? Here's what I'm gonna do, maybe. <laughs> Here's what I might possibly potentially do. Um, so we're gonna go back to this scene, and I'm going to go this, and I'm gonna add... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna add a script there, okay? Then I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna rip that. Stick it in here. Okay, then we'll go in here. Okay, uh, and then we're going to need... So we don't need this anymore. And we'll do this, okay. Um, and then, so we're gonna be right in here. Uh -huh. Okay, constant max points. Um, and then we'll do this, because now we are the trail. Okay. All right. So, um, what we're gonna do here is say, Function underscore ready. Um, we're going to say, so I want to do um, parent or var. Should I put this right here? So say var parent, okay, undefined. Um, actually, we could do it this way. on ready var parent equals get underscore um, parent and then we will say function score ready uh, uh, do, do, do parent dot remove child self okay and then we'll say um, parent dot get underscore parent dot add child self okay so that might have been a little bit uh complicated but essentially what i just did uh is that so all you gotta do is stick this in the scene 
Then what it's gonna do is gonna get our parent, so we have access to that parent, we're gonna store that. Uh, and then, so we'll do this. This will be parent.globalPosition here. Uh, and then, right when, after we get that information, then we're gonna unparent ourselves, or un, yeah, uh, unparent ourselves. So we're gonna move our, remove ourselves from that parent and reparent ourselves to another node that's not moving. Uh, and then we're gonna put these points there um, locally. So I think this should work. Although we might have some issues with some stuff. Let's see. Okay, we've got some issues. What's going on here? Parent node's busy setting up children remove node failed, call deferred. Yeah, so we can do that for sure. So call underscore deferred, uh, remove underscore child self. Um, by myself. We're also not calling the, so function, um, physics process raw score trail okay call deferred get parent dot uh, call underscore deferred add underscore child self okay and now let's give it a shot Woo! hey what's going on everybody my name is Aaron and I just coded a trail um, hell yeah, dude, that's sick. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that, dude. That was out of, I, I've never done that before. I've thought about it a few times. I'm like, this is how I would do it if I could, uh, if I could do it. Um, and that worked. It kind of looks, looks a little weird, but you know, that's like about as much as I want. Now that's with 20 points. We could go here and just put this to a hundred points or even a thousand points, this is probably gonna be a little unperformant. Oh, because that's way too many. That's way too many. Let's do like 50 points. That's just because that trail is like way too long that that's happening. Oh, and then we can change, I think, so let's just change this back to 20. And then if we go back here and go to the line trail, I think we can change, if we go to capping, joint mode, round, sharp limit, direction different radius. Okay, round precision. Okay, did that fix it? No, it's still, it's still a little choppy. I don't know why it is, but uh, we could probably fix that. Oh, also, I think we should do this. I think in this, this should not be physics process, but instead just process. I guess it doesn't really matter, but yeah. Anyway, there's the trail, made it. That's That's how I would do that. Um, yeah, you could use a particle system, but I just like, you have to emit so many particles, not that that matters as much because you'll be using the GPU, but um, yeah, I think this, this works just fine. Uh, although this uses the CPU, of course. Um, so yeah. Cold in Alaska, I totally forgot Alaska counts. It totally does. And uh, no, it is not colder than Alaska. Definitely not. Uh, our cheesy neighbors to the east are all right. <laughs> There's a Chiba hut in Madison, so that's good. Where are you from, dude? Yeah, there's there. Wow, so you've been to Madison, dude. Well, yeah, we used to go to the Chiba hut all the time. I've actually only been a few times, but my friends used to go there like every day. Uh, everyone else in my friend group were huge stoners, so they fit right in. Like in 2002, my brother lives in Toronto. When I visited, it was 15, negative 15 C, with negative 26 degrees. It's strange, it felt more cold on the surface of the skin. I can imagine quick frostbite, yeah. Oh yeah, we can get up to negative 40 in Minnesota. Oh, you're in Minnesota. Very dangerous if you are unprepared. Um, yeah, I, ugh. I can, I can, I used to be very good at converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, but I can, I, I think there's something changes about the, um, 
a fun equation, not function, uh, when you're doing it in negatives. But it's, I think it's uh, 1.8, 32 plus 1.8 times Celsius uh, is how, you, how it is done. Or 9 over 5, but it's pretty easy. So like, for instance, 4 degrees Celsius would be 32 plus 40 plus um, 8 times 4, which is 16. So that's 16 plus 40, which is 56, plus 32, um, which is 88. So it's 88 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. Um, I don't think it's possible because... <laughs> Where's winners pre pretty when it's not gray or soul destroying? If you also reset the global position to zero every frame of the line, that way you would keep it on the nose, but it would still trail. Or use particle system and emit using. Yeah, you are right. Um, I don't have to do it this way. I could, rather than unparent ourselves, uh, we could do it that way. Um, but both work. I mean, I think it's going to be exactly the same. Uh, so you're saying set global position equal to zero. Yeah, that would actually work. Yeah, that would work. But um, I think I like this. It's nice. Um, And then I think what I would do here is probably do... Oh, no, because it's already doing that, right? Anyway. But that's cool. Anyway, so that's that's how we get a line. I just... I hate that it's, like, kind of... The, the joints are pretty... I mean, it's pretty nice, but the joints are, like... A little bit clunky. But I guess it's just because our action's clunky, right? But um, we could, oh no, I see. But we could fix that, potentially. Like here, this is pretty nice, because, but it's because like, if you go like this and then stop, like our, our actual action has changed like that. Um, but the way we could easily do that is just to kind of lerp in between two points um, or make some kind of circular function to interpolate between two points, like a circular interpolate, but. I'm not going to. That's fine for me. Uh, remember, if anyone has any questions, you guys have priority. Uh, we don't have computers or school internet. I use my mobile and oh my god, I'm so sad. <laughs> so I don't have an idea how to teach them something. Um, uh, damn, dude. I'm sorry, man. That sucks. That sucks. Oh, how to draw several lines between points dynamically. I have a few points like area 2D. I would like to draw lines dynamically by mouse click. How to do that? Um, let's see. Click. Okay, what's the click function? Line dot add point, get global mouse position, create. Create a line to do. Okay, um, I, I guess we'll do that real quick, huh? Oh, and yeah, I'll just comment. Make sure that you use local chords for line 2D. So, it would be... Then we say two underscore local. There we go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's all I wanted to do. Make sure somebody uh, is a little less lost if they get hit by that same thing. Okay, best way to secure central in Android game. Um, so we had to change the camera to the frame color, collision damage of two enemies. I do want to share a quick, um, I 
That's cool. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I don't know how you get a hand uh, handle on one of those in um, Russia. I'm assuming you're in Russia. I don't know. Maybe you're, you're just Russian. Um, but yeah, Raspberry Pi's are cool. I really want to actually get into one and make like kind of a, a, a screen monitor that holds my calendar app that I'm going to make. That'd be sweet. It's also going to have a to-do list, a mission statement, and a goal organizer. So you can assign tasks to goals uh, and then put them on your calendar. It's all going to be an integrated self-life center. What did I want to do? What did I change? I thought there was something I wanted to do here. Ah, I'm actually very interested in this. How to detect which tile I'm standing on. Ah, we'll get the ID of the tiles. <gasps> oh my god. But as you said, the ID doesn't help when you're using auto tile. Oh, it does not? ID will always be the same. Hmm. That's why um, timemap.get cell auto tile cord exists. Oh, that's lit. Returns the coordinate subtile column in a row of the auto tile variation in the tile set. Returns a zero vector if the cell doesn't have uh, auto tiling. Using this, you can figure out which auto tiles are on. This would work, but unfortunately, I'm doing a procedure to general world. Um, so doing this would always give me a random value. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Do, do, do. Okay, see? So, IDK, if this would work. So my theory, I've, I've thought about this because, for instance, you might want to do this if you're running and you want to play a different footstep sound, depending if you're running, oh, sorry, uh, depending if you're running on dirt or like metal or something like that. Um, but, um, so you basically have a Raycast 2D, 2D um, pointing, pointing down, um, uh, then you can query, actually I don't know if that would work, I'm not going to post that. Because, so essentially, I think if you're using auto tile, it's not going to work. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But essentially, when you use the Raycast 2D, you can say get colliding body, but it would just return uh, the the tile. I mean, I'm sorry, the entire tile thing, not where you are. Um, so that is difficult. I wonder if you could attach variables. Huh. Name based on all instance on null instance weapon pickup. How to detect what time I'm standing on. Only appear on the corner of the slope. When walking, it's supposed to appear on the corner of the slope. How to draw several lines between points dynamically. The clamp doesn't work when sync to physics is on. How do I fix glitching? Um, Okay, thank God, because I'm, uh, okay, wait, can you explain why the get auto tile ID uh, doesn't work for procedural world? I'm confused by the person's question. Um, yeah, so I actually have not done this. Um, so which one are you talking about? Get auto tile ID. So yeah, get cell V uh, with the ID of the tile that you're standing on. Um, I, oh, I know why, I know why. So if we go into, if we add the... Um, tile map, right? Uh, we'll go into this and tile set, new tile set. We'll go into this uh, and then when we edit, I'm sorry, when we add something, um, if you add, I think, actually, I don't know for sure if it wouldn't work or why it wouldn't work on auto tile. I don't have anything I could really tile with. Let's just go for this, open that, right? Okay, and then let's. Oh, I want to turn snap on. Oopsies. You got to do this to turn snap on. Okay, so that. I haven't done this in a while, so maybe I'm not the best person to ask. It'd be nice if you could do a, a command key for this. And then like bit mask. Should be like I 
think that should work. And then if we go to the tile map here. Ah, or not. Oh, I see, that's why. Okay. So, let's delete that. I feel like that should work, right? Because we have right here, we have zero, one, two, and three. So it should be able to give you which one it is. Um, Interesting. I feel like if you're using, but the, the whole problem here, the point is that like if you're using a pr procedurally generated thing, you really don't need to use auto tile, right? Oh, you don't need to, but then you have to manually like connect dots to make sure the tile looks normally. Um, yeah, so it, it uses your um, generated tile set, right? But, or your, your auto tiled set, but uh, like, why isn't that, why is that not working? I just, I just understood it and now for some reason I can't remember how to explain it. But, um, okay, so I would like these to be bigger. I don't even understand how to use these bitmaps to be 100% honest. And then, oh, I think, yeah, and then when we go to the tile map here, should we do cell, should be, I think 32 by 32, right? And then now, oh, but that's still not working, of course. Who knows why? Not me. I don't know, I don't usually, I haven't used the tile map in a long time, and I typically don't use the auto tiler, because um, I haven't had the need to do that. Um, yeah. I just, I feel like it should still work. I digress. I don't. I don't really know. So apologies for that. It's something I should probably look into, but the, I haven't had the need to. How to make player jump to mouse position? Currently, have a player moving towards the mouse position using this example. Okay. Now, wow, that's awesome. Kids can code. Still active here. Now, how would I achieve jumping to the mouse position? Currently, my script is this. Ah, I see. So he's kind of like just copy and pasting code, doesn't know how it works. Is this? Oh, this is C sharp too. Yeah, I'm not gonna get into that. I don't know how to do C sharp. Script, get linked code, get linked node. I think I might, it might be time for me to retire. I mean, we've got, oh, Akinos, what's up? Since we were talking about tile maps, what is the best way to get all tiles colliding with an external collision area static body? When you pursue generate a level with tile map, use tile ID to place the tiles. Uh, I've done this recently, and I also have it so you can click on a block you might manipulate based on the tile. Ah, um, Runjan, I am going to copy and paste your answer into this poor guy's thing and just like quote you. Um, and then say, answer. From Runjan. YouTube. I, I always accidentally auto connect or auto correct your name to Runjan. But when you percent Okay, cool. Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, you could drop an answer. You could also just comment on my answer if you want, or, you know, I'm just gonna stick that in there. Hopefully that helps him. Oh, I, I'm so sorry, Beanie. I just banged her head against this thing. I got my dog with me. She's passed out right now. Um, okay, I actually have another idea. Every Monday we have 30 minute school meeting before classes so I can promote to kids who have PC to check out Godot Engine if they want good future. Uh, Dico Jerry's, yeah, but I still use the collision signals. I would simply get the entire tile map instead of the list of tiles, right? Or am I mistaken? You are right. Uh, if I think collision box is a tile map, yeah, I, I think you're right because that was my original thing. Was one, you'd have a raycast pointing right below you, and you could see what am I colliding with that's right below me. But you'll get the entire tile map. Same thing with um, the actually. So let's let's see here. 
tile map. You can like get cell ID. <laughs> So get cell, get cell auto tile cord. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, get cell V, so that's a position. Mask bit, get collision layer mask bit, get mask bit, get used cells. Maybe you could add groups to them? Um, get used cells by ID. Uh, returns an array of all cells within the given tile index with the given tile index specified in ID. Okay, that's not what you want. Cell quadrant size, so uh, no, that's what we want either. I think he said get cell V, but this returns a vector two. It returns the tile index. Oh, given the vector two. I see. I see. Hmm. <laughs> huh. Conclusion layer bit. Can you set different collision layer bits? Because that would be one way to get around this. Or even masks, right? You could say different layers and we could say we're on dirt, this, this, this. Um, get yourself, so if we're in an area, right? Example, position 1010 could mean 0, 0 and tile map. The tile size is, say, 32 by 32. That will turn the ID based on your mouse position. Okay, that's crap coding. <laughs> Set them up. Yeah, get cell, that's the one. But tile map chords are not the same as in-game chords. So you have to convert the game's chords. Oh, well, couldn't... Are they local chords? Because then you could just do uh, two local get global mouse position. But in this case, you might want something that Area 2D is on to answer uh, Akana's question, which is a little more challenging. To be honest, I don't think using an Area 2D would be the way to do it. Um, what is the best way to get all tiles colliding with an external layer? So I think with a static body, it's a little easier. Let's see. Get cell V will get the ID of the tile you're standing on. Will it though? Hmm. I don't know if that's true, right? You have to give it the position of the. Okay, well let's let's just do this. Let's add a tile map here, uh, and then I'll go ahead and we'll just do new tile set. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. And then we'll, not edit, we'll add, again I'll add this guy, and we'll do new single tile, and uh, I don't understand why the auto tile wasn't really working, but uh, that's okay, mm, that's okay. We'll just do, yeah we'll just do that, that's fine, okay. Um, Cool, okay, and then I'll go over to the tile map here. Oh, I guess we need several different tiles, huh? Otherwise, this makes no sense. Go here, uh, new single tile, click that one. Oh, here, we'll click that one, so that way it's uh, much more easily differentiable. Okay, now we can go here, uh, and we can do this, and we can do this, stuff like that. Okay, cool, so now what I wanna do is erase these, go into here. And I want to add collision shapes. Collision. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. It's a little unintuitive, isn't it? Um, navigation, occlusion. Ah, that'll be good. I actually don't know how to use that. That could probably be interesting. But, uh, okay. So we'll put this one here, and I'll put this one here. And now if I do this, yeah, I can collide with them. Um, okay, so. So. Oh, 
Let's look. So if I go to the back to this. Your, your problem. Um, so get colliding. So contrast, blah, 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 blah. Time collisions will be handled as a kinematic body. Interesting. Collision layer, collision mask, colluder light mask. Get used wreck, get used cells. Wait, what? Get used cells. Returns uh, with the position of all cells containing a tile from the tile side. Okay, that's not what we want. Okay, I think we're going to have to do this one. Okay. So, let's do this. If is underscore on wall print high, okay. And then I would like to do this. Should print high. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, so then what I want to do is then Well, this is not the best way to do this by any means whatsoever, but uh, we can do, <laughs> this is just to, so this is not how you should do this. You should probably make this either an auto load um, or maybe give the tile map a script. I don't know, Runjing is probably the better guy to ask about this. Um, Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, all right, so get parent dot get underscore node uh, tile tile map. Okay. Um, dot get underscore cell V. Uh, and then we say global position, but uh, as Runjan was saying, I need to clean this up. Let's do it. Oh, cancel. No, uh, never mind, that wasn't important. All right, blah, blah. Okay, tile map. So we go to get cell V. Does it tell us? The other cell, um, it notifies us. Okay, so so why doesn't that work? Why? What are you saying, Runjan? Why can't this do this? How to joystick for touch screen? Is this the same kid who was sp spamming me before? Oh, that could be a pain in the boot. A pain in the boot. So what do I say here? I wanna do print. This is very not how you should do this, but uh, I just wanna see if this will work. Oh, wait a second. So that's one. And then if I go here and I add another one, oh, it's not going to let me do that. There should be no negative one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um. <laughs> well, dude, I thought I told you last night, if you come in here and just spam stuff, I'm not going to answer your question. But uh, I do think that is a good question. So if you're uh, polite, then I'm happy to answer it, actually. Um. Cell dot int tile dot x. I don't know. 
I don't, I'm, yeah, I think you should ask Runjan because I don't know how to do this. Um, but with the uh, joystick thing, I will go ahead and just show you some code that I made um, for that exact purpose. Uh, so this will be knockback and movement. Okay. Right to main. All right. Maybe I'll toss it in the, uh, well, here, we can actually just open up Godot. Is it, no, Gamepad Client. Okay, there actually is already a pretty good tutorial on this online, which um, I wish I knew about before I made this, because I saw it after, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's exactly what I did, but it took me hours to figure it out. Gamepad, uh, icon, join server. Oh, no, I think I put in buttons. Yeah, here we go, joystick. Okay, so here it is. Um, it's a text direct, which is the base. And then we have a touch screen button, which is this part right here. If I go ahead and, uh, oh, I guess I can't um, get rid of the collision shape or make it not shown. Oh, shape visible. My throat is dying right now. Um, yeah, so here it is. Now, I think I have it so I can uh, simulate this. Yeah, so you can see what it does here um, is that uh, I, you have to touch it in order for it, once you do, if you release it, it goes back, it snaps back to the center. Uh, if you press and hold it, then it will follow your mouse, or in this case, a finger, uh, only as long as it is uh, around this circle, just like that. And what we're doing is we're getting an intensity and an input vector. So what direction is it putting? Uh, and that's all happening. So if we go into my code here, so I've got a joystick. This is the outside touchscreen button. Again, the inside. And we go here. Uh, and then I've connected. Let's do this. Yeah, the pressed and release signal. So that's important. Um, so some of these things are going to be very specific to me. Uh, but <clears throat> I'm using the uh, input event thing here. Um, I am also using, yeah, ignore this. This is just to make sure it centers itself, which is also very specific to me. Uh, okay, uh, so released, pressed, calculate input. Okay, so uh, quickly I'll go over calculate input. This is, actually, no, I, I guess I haven't looked at this in a long time, so let me actually quickly read over it. If held, if not held, check. Hub check equals true. Current touch index equals event dot get index. Um, okay. Okay. Um, if event is input event screen drag or event is input event screen touch and event dot get index equals equals current touch index. Oh, this might be more, I don't remember how exactly <laughs> I did all this. Uh, I can just yoink this, or you can just yoink this code. I can toss it in there if you want. Um, so, essentially though, you, this, is my, this might be the part you try not to understand, <laughs> even, even just like up to here. But this is the part I can still explain to you. So, um, we say we calculate a desired joystick position, right? Uh, and the reason we calculate a desired is to make sure that it doesn't um, pass our um, outer edge of the circle, right? Because you can see that if I run the scene, uh, it is limited to the circle. So even though, so technically right now, the, the desired position would be over here, right? When I go like this, this is the desired position, but then this is the actual position, right? So that's why we calculate a desired and then set the actual position given that calculation. So if our joy position uh, equals event.position minus joystick center, all right? So this gets the actual um, uh, uh, joystick center, I believe, should be, oh, that's a constant. Where is, where is joystick center? It's gotta be more than, oh, joystick underscore Hello. center. Hey, yeah, where's the third? Where's the third one? There it is. Okay, that's why. Uh, joystick button dot get texture dot get size divided by two. Okay, yeah, so that, that's just exactly in the center of this. Oh, I see. So that's so that we can set this because it was setting according to this rather than that, but there's actually a better way of doing it. But anyway, so that gets the center. So this will get us where we want, so where our finger is on the screen. That gives that position. Then we say joystick button dot set global position. Um, 
I don't know why I'm using the set, um, to the joystick uh, position desired. That should not be the case. Yeah, we shouldn't have to do this, but that's okay. Um, if joy position desired dot distance to base center is greater than base boundary, um, and so our base boundary is just going to be uh, the radius of whatever the circle is, right? Um, so you can do that manually. You can click this. Uh, we can go here. Uh, and we can click on this, and we can see that that would be uh, 250, right? So it's 250 pixels from the center to the outside. Uh, but what I've done here is to make this more dynamic is to say that uh, base boundary uh, is equal to our texture, uh, get our width, and then uh, 2.0. So that way I can adjust it if I like. And so we've got that as the center, right? So joy, joy position desired dot distance. To <laughs> my dog's eating my accordion. Um, uh, dot distance to base center. So is greater than base boundary, uh, meaning that our position is outside of the, the circle. Then uh, we set our position, uh, base center, dot direction to, so this points towards that, times base boundary times joystick center. Why am I doing that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yes, now I understand. Now I remember everything. So, essentially, we're going to set our position to equal whatever we're pressing. But then we do a quick check, and this happens before it even happens, right? Uh, is that we say, um, if it's greater than the base boundary, then we reset the position, although this should be set global position. I don't know why I do that. I don't know how it works. Um, but we sent it to, to be exactly the position of the base boundary. So we get the direction to where we're pressing, right? So we, you know, if, if, if we're pr pulling this way, put it in that direction. But then we also want it to be uh, times our base boundary. Uh, I, I'd assume this should be minus, but I guess it were, for some reason it's, ah, yes, okay. Plus joystick center. And this will send it to be exactly what it is around the circle. So that's, that's how that works. Uh, and then we calculate input uh, and then we get the intensity differently. This should be within calculate input. I don't know why it is not. But anyway, uh, I don't want to mess with anything because it works. Um, yeah. So, oh, and then pressed and unpressed is where we calculate do these things. So, uh, calculate input, what it does is we calculate a X and Y by getting the uh, essentially direction that it is pointing. So the direction of the joystick center from the center of the actual thing. So if it's here and here, then this is the direction. If it's here, then that's the direction like this, right? Uh, and then, so same thing with the X. Um, although I don't quite understand why I did this this way. That Y, that X. Because we could just do input vector. Yeah, I, I think you should just be able to do this. Input, um, uh, input underscore vector equals um, input vector dot direction to, uh, oh no, we need joystick button dot global position, joystick button dot global position dot direction to um, base uh, underscore center. Okay. Why is that not like that? Dot global position dot oh, because this needs to go in here. Okay, and then, but what I want to do is just instead, I want to see if this works. So I'll say print this. In fact, I'll say prints. And here I'll say test. Okay, and then here I want to say print. Uh, well, actually, we could just do this. Put this here. Uh, and then finally, I want to say, not finally, but reg. Uh, and then we'll just print our input vector. And then these should be the same. Oh, that's weird. Oh, yeah, yeah, mine is opposite. Huh, that's weird. I mean, that's pretty easy to fix, but yeah, so that does work, but uh, it's giving us the 
uh, opposite. So you would, I mean, you would just literally do uh, times negative one here. And there you go, that's, I mean, that's how you get that. And then the input vector is, uh, of course, used because it's, it gives you, that's a direction, right? It's a normalized vector um, that is a direction. And thus, uh, you can use that in your games because you just say, uh, you know, velocity plus equals input vector times speed, right? And that's how you'd move. Anyway, that's how you do that. I, I don't think I'm gonna copy and paste this code uh, into there, but yeah, I mean, he, here it is on screen. You can pause it. Uh, you can see everything I've got here. Scroll down a little bit and pause and copy this. Um, and then you can see that this is a joystick and a touchscreen button. And hopefully that works for you. But um, yeah, I mean, if anyone else has any, uh, this was how to joystick for touchscreen presented by HP. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you, Sasasis. I need, an, I need a good announcer. Uh, for the good Go Godot Jam, are you going to make your own assets? It's my first game jam, and the idea of making assets was, sounds like a lot. Um, Diego, uh, I don't know if I'm actually even going to participate because I might want to just be more helpful to people, like do these Godot Q and A's for people who are working on the games. But um, to answer your question, I do think that it is a lot to use pre-made assets. Um, so what I recommend you do is you. I, I mean, I'm sorry to make your own assets. Uh, is just go find some free ones from Kenny uh, Assets. Uh, you know, Kenny Assets is great. They've got a lot of cool 2D and 3D game assets, um, which are very, very, like this is, look at that. I mean, this is basically all you need. You can make a full game with this one. Uh, you've got characters, stuff like that. Um, you can breathe a lot of life into stuff like that. That'd be cool. Um, I think, is this the one? Oh, this is Crosshairs, that's interesting. Simple space. There you go. There's a space game. I would definitely try using. Um, wow, that's sick. I've actually never looked at their 2D packs. I've only used this one. Nope, not that one. Was it that one? I've I've only used one of them, and it was the one for the Mrs. Mrs. Jam. Um, and yeah, it was sweet. Benny Hooser. Um, <coughs> Yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I would definitely recommend that you use uh, pre-made assets. If you want to draw and you like it, then you know, go for it. Also, of course, like the, the first time I did that, what I did is I used pre-made assets, but then um, it was pixel art, and so once they're pre-made, it's actually pretty easy to then take those and add just a little bit of animation to them um, in pixel art, which is much easier than doing it yourself, and then that's fine too, so that's one way to do it. Um, GD script Runjin. <laughs> Wait, what? Wedding vows in GD script? But world to map will do that for you. Oh, that's sick. World to map. That's very nice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, my girlfriend is right over there. Say hi, Abigail. Hello. Yep, she's real. I promise. Uh, I snorted them. If, if love me, we married equals true. Good, 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 good. If, if married, you property equals mine. Just kidding. We're not in Kazakhstan. Damn, everybody keeps saying about using Kenny, but I never do it. I really should. Um, <laughs> I, I won't tell her. It's our secret. I also use, uh, Itch has a lot of great assets as well. Um, so you go to the dashboard here. Uh, you can go to, oh, I thought they had like a whole, there we go, assets. I don't know why those, so I guess that's under browse assets. And they have like, look at this. Oh, obviously we want to sort by free. It's like tag free. There you go. Tons of cool assets. Um, yeah, here's a very popular free set and I think it's great. It gives you basically everything you need to make a pretty sweet game. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Uh, yeah, tons of these little cute little pixel art guys, really well done um, and yeah. Totally, totally, totally do that. 
<laughs> People are so funny. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm not that smart. I could totally make that. I could totally make my fake girlfriend. I used Godot, actually. It's pretty interesting. They have a lot of built-in functions for girlfriend. Generic, generic RPG. Cool. Um. <laughs> Audiophile even more nerd. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Look, uh, let's let's check this out. Girlfriend. Girlfriend soundboard. Why the fuck does your girlfriend's chin look like it belongs like this? <laughs> so that's sex. <laughs> I'm jumping. I'm jumping. <laughs> wow, they put that in SpongeBob. Interesting. It's a little creepy. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> but that's how I do it. Yeah, my girlfriend's Irish now. Oh, sweet. I haven't even been looking at the restream chat. Hopefully, uh... It doesn't look like anybody from Twitch posted, but you never know. Congratulations, I've received a hundred messages today with a restream chat. chat. Pretty cool. Oh my god. Librarium bundle? Whoa, dude, is this free? Dude, this is epic. Wow, that is sick. This is really sick vector art right here. Um, no way. Holy crap, dude. This is a deal and a half right now. Yeah, this is sick. This is very sick. You could make like a Pokemon game out of this. Like 100%, you can make your own Pokemon game. Uh, just using this asset pack. And it would be sweet. Although some of these are a little, like this like is more complex than like this one, I guess. Like this one, or a little different art style, but I mean, people get it. They, they work enough together. That is really freaking cool. Um, Ash K6. Years ago, I set out with the mission of creating a free conference of low static and anime battlers for available for users in any game engine, any game project. Over 900 free releases. Wow, dude. 72 Dragon Bones format skeletal battlers. Dude, this is amazing. I can't believe this guy did that. That is awesome. What does he get out of it? Like, I'm sure some people. He doesn't even allow. Dude, he's not even allowing for donations. What the heck? Well, I click download now. Oh, there we go. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping people donate because that's amazing. That is awesome. <laughs> Dude. Honestly, like, I don't know if pixel art is that much easier than doing vector art. For me, at least, I don't feel like it is. I mean, if you do really simple... Yeah, if you, if you do really simple pixel art, then I would say yes. But, it's like... I forget who said it. Really smart guy. But he said that um, I didn't have time to write a short note, or a short letter, so I wrote a long one. Um, and it's basically saying that, like, it's hard to be concise and think about every word, whereas if you just spill everything you're saying onto the page, it's a lot easier. And I think it's the same thing with art, and we were talking about vector art, like, I can put as many colors, gradients, hundreds of thousands of pixels onto uh, something and shrink it down, do all this stuff, uh, add all these details I'm adding, or thinking about. But with pixels, you have like 16 little squares to represent uh, like, you know, what someone's doing, what they are, are they good, are they bad, are they running, are they, you know, it's, so I think it's, it's pretty difficult to do. Um, yeah, I think, I think this is probably going to be it for today. I'm pretty, 
Yeah, it takes, pixel art animations take so long to do. So long. It's like, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah. But yeah, perspective too in pixel art. Like if you're doing flat pixel art, that's like a, a level easier than once you start drawing perspective because it's just like you can't draw angles. You know what I mean? You have to, and you have to make sure that you obey the laws that like people have taught that make sure your eyes will assume there's an angle there. It's like, it's tough. It's very tough. Um, like if we go to my game Lunar Bastion, which I made all the art for uh, and in pixel art, let's see if this plays. I think there was, oh no, there were some bugs running this in 3.3, .3, but this is still the 3.2 version. Um, Tell me if the volume is too loud or anything. But yeah, so this is all pixel art that I made. Um, you can totally go play this game, by the way. Um, let's do this. So you can see that like everything's got, we've got these shadows here. Uh, I made all this art. I made the, the planet. I made the star. The stars and planet are probably the easiest thing to make. Um, but you see like everything is all really good. You can tell that this is like kind of hid. The light source is coming from this direction. I obeyed that um, throughout. Right, and um, I don't know, I, I feel like I did a pretty good job here. Oh my god, this is like getting busy. This game is actually, I, I kind of want to finish doing this game, but it's just such a slow development cycle. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Probably not, probably not, let's be honest. Um, oh god, my sniper about to be dead. Yeah, it dead. Anyway, yeah, so I mean, but... Luckily, in this game, I didn't have to do... This is the only thing animated, I think. Um, everything else is animated in-game. So, for instance, their rotation here is uh, animated in Godot. Oh, although, if you can see here, they've got uh, a right, left, up, down uh, animation. Yeah, I think it's just right, left, up, and down animation for every single style of turret. Uh, and so when they rotate, uh, it does that. So you can see that, yeah, pointed down at you, it looks a little different. Uh, they also have one side that has the clip and the other side that has the ejection. So on this side, you can see that that's happening. But if he shoots this way, you can see the ejection thing um, coming out and then that flashes. So I don't know, but this was very hard. Like, I feel like if I made this in vector art, would not have taken me nearly as long. Um, but anyway, that's that. There's that game. Um, and then this is the first game I ever made. And I think the art here is just OK. But like this art was not that hard to do. Um, See, this is by far my, I think the audio is still screwed up. Yeah, the audio is still screwed up on this thing. So let me just go into settings and turn the, uh, turn all those off so that way it's silent. Um, okay. And so you can see that like, so I made the ship. Oh, why is it not? Wait, it doesn't take WASD? What? Wait, oh, my hand was in the wrong place. Wait, I turned off sound effects. That means I screwed up. I didn't put uh, explosions on the sound effects. Yeah, but you can see I made the bullets. Um, the black hole was actually the only, one of the only difficult parts. It took me quite a while to make. But like most of these things, I made each character in like probably less than an hour, for sure. Like, yeah, I mean, I probably made those bigger, the smaller, the, these guys, the little ones for some reason, it actually took me a little while to get right. But the, bar, the bigger guys, I made much quicker. And then I want to just wait till the, the big Skeletor guy comes out of the, the works here, because he looks freaking sick. Sorry, I, I, I really want... Oh, come on, where's the big guy? Well, now I can just do this. For 3D in Godot, is there a way to make 3D mesh fall them up? Oh, dude, I'm sorry, I can't help you with 3D. I don't know crap about 3D. Oh, look at that. All right, there's the Skeletor. Look at that. That was not that hard to make. Pretty sweet. Anyway. Okay, cool. That's how I did that. Let's see. Yeah, dude. I... That was... That was actually pretty hard to do. And I really... I love that effect. By... Um, so getting the, the, the outline of the letters to kind of just fly through like that. Um, it's like this. I, th I love that. I think that looks very cool. 
And first, if you go to settings, um, you'll have this. And so you can see that it only does that for the one that you select, which is cool. You also get, and so this is the effect when you break the high score, you get that same effect that happens. I don't think I can break the high score. Oh, yeah, I can. I can break the high score in classic mode real quick. So watch the, the high score up here. Okay. The, the secret to this game is chaining together the multi-kills. Because then that, that helps your multiplier out. There we go. So yeah, so when I beat the high score, then it changes to the rainbow bit there. Uh, and then it also uh, spews out those particles. So yeah, I don't know, I, I love that. Once I figured out how to do that, that was really cool. This is the first game I made. I learned so much making this game. I still think it's probably my favorite game that I've made. But yeah, anyway. Um, thanks, dude. I, I really like making things look good. That's kind of like something I think I'm good at. So I'm good at code and making things look good. Sometimes I think the design element of game dev is, is what I need work on, which so I'm trying to like get better at that. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We will see. Like, you know, the kind of user experience, like rewards versus punishments, balancing it out, making something that's actually fun. You know what I mean? Like I can make something work well and I can make it look beautiful, but can I make something that's fun? Uh, and so I think I got lucky with those, uh, you know, the tower defense game, I stole a trope, right? The tower defense, it's that, you know, you know it works, I made that, right? The other game, uh, my first idea ever, I was like, I've had that idea for a while and it ended up being actually very fun, even though it's pretty hard. If you go play that, I'm sure some people will, you'll be like, how the hell are you this good at steering that ship? Cause it's like everyone complained how hard the controls were. And uh, I don't really care. I, I want the controls. They're, the controls could not be better. They're always going to be difficult to do. And it's just hard. And you it's a skill curve. You have to get better and play it. And it's really tough. And that's kind of why it's fun. Because you start finally getting past. You beat the high score and murdering it. So cool. But anyway. Um, yeah, thank you, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I, I pay a lot of attention to the those those details like that. Um, thank you, Roger. I... I I'll be honest, you guys, I'm pretty pooped, but I don't want to like leave because I've got 21 people watching me right now. So please ask me questions, not 3D, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, any questions you have, uh, I guess we could do, we could go through the ghetto Q&A, but it didn't look like there was a ton of good ones. So making nodes reusable, uh, I already answered that, just instancing, detect what tile I'm standing on. Runjin, Runjin did you go answer this guy? Nope, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to call you out. Um, use get on vector components. Uh, return air, air. Uh, are these the same guy? Work with nested state machines. I'm gonna export on mobile. Wow, so it looks like something in uh, Godot 3.0 added this air, which is interesting. To change the camera 2D frame color in the editor. I'll get that, that's a quick tip that I think I can pop out. I tried to buy local to scene for the shader, uh, my first question, but it doesn't seem to work for me, is the same for each instance. Um, when we see some bigger games made with Godot? Like, in terms of bigger, you mean in terms of their success? Like still indie games, of course, I'm assuming? So, um, no, not Godot QA. I just wanna go to the Godot website. Uh, and they should have like a, a showcase Interesting. Um, there are actually already some pretty successful games out there. I think they're coming more and more. Here we go, showcase. So like, I don't know. Yeah, here, here's Gravity Ace. I think this game is going to do pretty well and I think it's a really sweet game. Um, let's do this. Um, so you can see, I mean, it's just beautiful and it's amazing. This guy, John Watson, who I've already talked about in the stream is making it here. Um, and I think this game is going to do pretty well. Uh, I mean, you can just see some of the, the quality of games that have been um, made with Godot. I mean, this is, that's beautiful. That's so, that's so cool, dude. Um, and so like, yeah, I mean, I, I think that in terms of popularity of the engine, I think it's really taking off. Like if you look at just, I mean, the number of members on our Godot, it's really, it's an exponential curve. Although I don't know how to, oh, I need to get this so bad. 
I think I'm just gonna download it right now. We got here, medical school related. Oh, cool, I helped somebody. That's always good. This is a cute little tile set. Or is it even? It's like interesting, it kind of reminds me, it, it's like if Castle Crashers were pixel art, is kind of what that reminds me of. I, I really want to make a Castle Crashers type game. I just, I love Castle Crashers. Can I get a what what from the chat? <laughs> uh, okay. Online, oh, what? The online version of the Godot editor? I did not know there was that. Um, yeah. Okay, so I want to go back to Buster Bobo because he was saying he has some issues. Um, no way. I've never done this. I just want to see. Maybe I could solve your question on this. Start Godot editor. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, it's not working for me. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Let's go into here. So, okay, if I go in QA sessions, I think it was the second one. No, third one. Apply shader. Okay, um, and then theoretically I should be able to duplicate this one. Like this. Um, I haven't... Okay, so that's affecting both of them, but it should only be affecting one of them. So if we go to material, uh, here, source, local scene. Which we made unique in each instance of its local scene, it can thus be modified in a scene instance without impacting the other instances of that scene. So that's, so there's been some issues with things like this, and I'm really hoping that that's not going to be an issue here. So this is, this is what this is meant to do. So I see what you're saying. I don't understand why that's not happening. Oh, wait, this one's, is this it then? Maybe it's that? No. No, what the heck? Shader param. Hmm. Hmm. Anyone, anyone uh, else want to shout some uh, on Mega Project on Mega? Not sure how to share links though. I mean, I, I think that if I can solve this, I can solve your issue here. Um, a Godot game session, co-op, uh, MP games in future. Yeah, I'm so down for that. That sounds like a bunch of fun. I, I, I've actually been thinking I want to go live with you and just have a little back and forth. I think it'd be really fun. Uh, so definitely let me know. Oh yeah, Franz Fury. Franz Fury is going to come out um, really quick. <laughs> well, actually, we can just probably... This dude's game looks, oh, behind the scenes. Interesting, does he have a YouTube channel? Oh, it's this guy? He's actually participating in the Go Go Game Jam and his game looks freaking sweet. Oh, it's him. I've I think I've watched some of his tutorials actually, but wow, that's beautiful. He's just like, he's a master. He's, he's made something like truly special. I don't understand why he chose this ugly uh, theme here. But, uh, you know, to each his own. Everyone's entitled to their own uh, incorrect opinion. Yeah, that's sick. Anyway, yeah, that's Friends Fury. It's freaking sweet. Um, definitely check that one out. I think that one will do be a pretty big game. Dude, yeah, it's so juicy. Like, every time I watch it, I'm like, I would actually play that game. And I, I, I don't play that many games. So I have to be honest, dude, I really don't understand why, because I haven't done this, I've only been told, uh, and of course it says right here, 
Uh, if true, the resource will be made unique in each instance of its local scene. It can thus be modified in a scene instance uh, without impacting other instances of that scene. So it should work, right? But uh, it doesn't. So why is that? What if I remove the script here? What does the script on this do? Oh wait, what was that? Can I not undo that? Okay. What's the script? Interesting, so that actually doesn't need to be there. Okay. Whoa, it's weird. Oh, okay, quit. Oh, that, nope, nope, nope. That's not what we wanted to do. Huh. So then this one, yeah, okay. Damn, bro. I don't know what to tell you because this is super duper weird. Hmm. Got get material. Okay. Hmm. makes my brain stop working all bigger. All right, so let's, I might have to do a little Googling to be honest, because I don't quite understand why that's happening. This should, when it's put local to scene like this. Maybe I can go into here. Yeah, it's got, it says that right there. Local to scene. Resource path. The path to the resource in case it has its own file. It'll return its file path if tied to the scene. It'll return the scene path. Next. Whoa. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Ditto. Back to only. One. All right, here we'll do this. Godot, um, local to scene shader, not working because I'm sure we're not the first people to. Um, okay, yeah. So he's saying exactly what I should saying. The second animation animates some uniforms in a shader attached to the sprite. Uh, it create a dissolve effect. Fortunately, whenever one enemy dies, the shader animation initiates all my enemies dissolve rather than just the one I killed. How can I fix this? Um, so yeah, he's saying exactly what I just said. Go to your shader tool uh, resource section, turn on the local. Yeah, dude, that's it. See, look, I think it might be a 3.3 error. That's the only thing I can think of, because, yeah, this doesn't have a material. Okay. Okay, and then, so we should do it there, right? Yes. Yeah, but this is what we want, right?
in shader resource. Yeah, dude, that's not working. Maybe that was the problem? Nope. Okay, cool. Okay, so now this should definitely not work. Well, here, let's let's do this. Delete that, we've got this one sprite, we've got both of these unchecked. Now I'll go ahead and duplicate this one. I'll move this um, up the wall. Move this up here, i run this. They both light up. Okay, now what I'd like to do is then go into here, material, uh, material here. Now, if we go to this resource, and I say, what does this say? Material.trez. So this local to scene. And this one is that one. Why? Huh. Super weird. Oh, I think I know. I think this needs to be its own scene. Say branch is scene. Okay. And then we'll go into this, and we'll go into the shader material here. Okay. I don't know if this is it, but uh, let's see. Local scene, this one, okay. Um, then, save this. Now if we go here and duplicate this one, let's see. Please, oh, why? Hmm. Oh, that's the path of the material, okay. Dot tres one. Hmm. Maybe you have to set that path variable. Yeah, but see, that's the problem. That defeats the entire purpose. If you have to make a unique shader, what that does is that actually makes, um, what that would do is to make a, a whole new copy. We'd have flash material one, flash material two. And if I have like 30 enemies, I obviously don't want that to happen. So that's a big problem. If that is, that's a very big problem. Stacked over each other. I would like to apply a shader on a specific instance scene that's above some other instances. Scenes uh, have a modulated color, that means that blah, 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 blah. Uh, on the Runo, I tried using a texture, but the screen texture is not looking. I already tried to activate, no. Every time I use instance child scene and try to customize something, on that instance, I have to be super careful to make sure every customizable resource has local to scene checked, otherwise I end up m messing the original scene. Uh, since you're supposedly creating an instance of a scene, I feel that having to check every local to scene resource is counterintuitive. Why local to scene true isn't the default? That's what he's proposing. People always make you feel like an idiot. If you duplicate a resource for everything, you'd be wasting CPU cycles and memory on that. Also, sometimes you actually want your instances to be shared across instances. I don't know, dude. I really don't get it. Um, you can make it unique in code, so you instance them, you can make them unique. Sadly, it's... No, 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 no. That would... Then what the hell's the point of this? People... I... I mm, no. No. Nuh-uh. Ma uh ma. Let's 
Trez one. So if we do this and then run this, okay. Now if I go back here, it would have set this automatically. Okay, well let's do this. So say function underscore ready um, underline material uh, dot resource path equals And then this would be percent s let's see if this breaks the game here okay Are they local to scene? Did I check that? <gasps> oh, ha <laughs> Who's the best? Say it. Oh, I don't know why that happened, but dude. Okay, um, is that really what it takes though? Like, should I have to do this? Oh, now we need to do pass, but... Okay, so it actually has nothing to do with this code. Or is it because now they're set to that? If I make an inst if I instantiate these, I wonder if it does it differently. So let's go back to this, now let's check this. So it still says one there, okay. So now if I go here, oh, but I bet you if I go this and I click editable children. Ah, okay. It's just, uh... Did I break it? Let's see. Huh, so now it works. I don't understand what I, I don't think I did anything differently there. Um, I, I don't know if uh, uh, Buster Bobo is, Bodo or Bobo is still here, but um, I don't know why that worked. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, somehow this is now working. And there's only one material. If you click make unique, that's definitely not what you want to do. Um, so yeah, I don't, I really don't know how I just did that. Um, I clicked local to scene on both of these, but I already had done that. And then the script, wait a second. What if I do this? Nope, okay, good. It's like, what if they just needed a ready function? You never know, sometimes there's weird bugs like that. But that's okay, I mean, so that's how it worked. Uh, I also wonder that if, like, if you were to instantiate these through code, if you would have that. Yeah, so, okay, so my best guess is that, go here, okay, uh, then what you want to do is go into this, clear both of these maybe, um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if you want to clear that. Undo both of these, okay, then I run the scene, okay, then I'm going to come back into here, click local to scene on both of these guys, like that, save this, okay, and then I'll run it here. 
yeah, it's still working. So I guess just try that. Try refreshing like everything here um, and just clicking local to scenes. So both of these local to scenes, there's two resources, make sure they're checked. Uncheck them, delete everything, reset it, and then try it again because that is how it should work. That's the whole point of this, right? And there we go. Um, so that makes sense. So Godot is making copies of them, but it's making copy of them in the background, right? And it's only, it's temporary copies. So that's why this works right there. Um, yeah, so I'm glad we could figure that out, I think, kind of. Tell me if, tell me if that works for you. Take Atlas Texture and apply Wind Shader. I wanted to set that shader to be customized for each frame based on the row. Well, I don't know about your specific situation, but if you go to the shader material for that and do this, I think it should hopefully work for you. Remember, uncheck, redo all that. I don't know why. This is this is a so my idea. I'm just trying to illustrate. This is a very similar, not a similar shader, but I've just got a shader that has a parameter that I'm adjusting from the scripts of each of these guys separately. Um, yeah. Okie doke. There's that. Feels good. Feels good. Go ahead. Oh, no, I guess I closed GitHub. Okay. Um, so shader fix. Okay, doc. Okay, the doc, okay. <laughs> yeah, I uh, the very first shader tutorial I've ever seen talked about that. So thankfully, um, yeah. But you know what, you guys, uh, my voice hurts. And I'm a little tired. I hate to, to dip with this many people. Unless anyone, if anyone has a question, if not brain working, get coffee. Oh, I might get some coffee right now. Uh, actually, I think I'll do tea because I've been having some trouble sleeping. But the... Oh, see, yeah, I'm glad because that's ridiculous. Like, you shouldn't have to do that, right? Like, obviously, Godot should have it built in to do that. Or um, if that's not working, what I would do is probably make a uh, script so that when something is spawned, for instance, we would then just change the, uh, we would make a copy of the material, or you could probably do like make unique, material.make unique for every every single scene you, you add to. Um, yeah, but what make unique is for is to, uh, like actually, if I wanted to make two particle nodes, I don't know if, I wonder if particles has it, but uh, if I wanted to change the actual, um, like if, if you wanted to change this value here, right? I still, this is going to be reflected uh, throughout, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't know what I'm saying. Um, like, like if I'm making two particle nodes, right, and I want to do one that's basically the, like I particle one that's an explosion that's green, whatever, but then I want to have an explosion that's red. Um, well, I'm not, if, let's just say I wanted to do it this way. Yeah, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> My girlfriend is telling me to stop. Um, then you wouldn't like do local to scene. You would make unique and makes a whole separate copy of it. Then you save it, yeah, and then you have two separate things. But yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. Uh, I will really quickly again plug the Go Go Game Jam, and I guess I'll leave the stream up for a little bit um, in case because it seems like we got a little good uh, community going here. I'll do. I'll do. I will drop my Discord invite link again. Uh, in case anyone wants to join, or uh, you can just join Rungeons because uh, I'm, I'm in there quite a bit. So let me quickly copy this. Okay. Just like that. Why no worky? What the hell? Oh. It's weird. Okie doke. Cool. So there's my Discord link. Uh, and then I quickly also want to link everybody to the Go Goto Game Jam. Hey, we almost got to 60. That'd be cool. This is a game jam I am co-hosting. It's a really great first game jam. Godot exclusive, por supuesto. Um, yeah, thank you, Sosasis. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. This has been really cool. Uh, again, I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the stream up for a little while so everyone can chat, uh, and I'll come back and check uh, if the concurrent viewers has dropped. Um, 
to where I think I can just end the stream and it won't mess up with you guys. But feel free to join the Discord and chat in there. Uh, I also have a questions tab, which has not been used too extensively by people. But if you'd like to ask me a question and I'm not on the Q&A, I can, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and answer your, um, your Q&A just right here. You can see we've got a little bit of action. One question from this guy. Um, and yeah, I'll try, I'll answer it right there. Uh, I also might just, it might inspire me to do a live stream. And if I think your question is really helpful, then I might just bring it to the live stream later, but still answer it uh, right away. So yeah, just go ahead and join that. Also join Runjan's Discord. Uh, I'm sure he can toss you guys um, a, a, a link to that. You can probably ask in my Discord uh, so he can actually, cause he can't send links here. But yeah, that's, that's about that. So uh, thank you guys. Oh yeah, I guess I should probably also show that. So if you go to my channel, uh, I've got quite a few beginner tutorials if you've never done, if you've never used Godot before, uh, or any programming language, I have the non-coder's guide to GDScript, which teaches Godot as if it is your first uh, programming language. Though, uh, it's kind of a bummer because for people who have learned other programming languages and want to learn Godot, this is a little slow for you. But I think that this course explains GDScript and Godot better than anything I have seen uh, out there thus far. So, you know, go ahead and maybe check this out. Watch it on two times speed if you do know how to code, but you're new to GDScript. I think this will walk you through some very basic stuff uh, and all, all, it covers basically all the basics. Currently right now, uh, there's only nine episodes. I, I think I'm gonna make episode 10, maybe not today, because my voice really hurts, but um, maybe tomorrow I'll make episode 10 uh, and just drop that guy. Um, and yeah, so there's eight episodes right now. It's covering up to an intro to signals, I think. Yep, signals, so I introduce signals. Uh, and we start with um, our intro and making our first scene. And then what are variables and functions? Literally that basic. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I think I need to hop off because my girlfriend's studying for, uh, she's in medical school and she has a, an exam uh, on this, this Friday. So yeah. Oh yes, and again, let me drop that link as well real quick. The, all the answers to everything in this here uh, is located in this this GitHub directory. And I believe I pushed the most local changes. Yep, okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Actually, now I'm realizing I just saved something so clearly. Oh, no, okay. Anyway, yep, there we go. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and again, leave the stream open for a little bit. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, join the Go Good O Game Jam if you can, uh, you know, if you think it would be a good experience and I do, so. Yeah, I, I, my brain no work. So thank, thank watch, bye good. I, uh, <laughs>